The virus is an XL channel which may contain explicit language. Channel blocking is available by calling 1-800-XM-RADIO or in XM Canada, 877-438-9677. And now, Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. No reading, no research, just strong opinions. All right, hey, what's up? It's uh, Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa for another uh, edition of the Uninformed show. For uh, what, what, what day is it supposed to be, Joe? November 22nd? Yes. So happy Thanksgiving to you, Joe. Hey, Bill. How, how did you enjoy your Thanksgiving that hasn't happened yet? Well, even on the air date of this show, it hasn't happened. The Thanksgiving's on the 27th, I believe. Why do you got to get technical? <laughs> <laughs> or the 29th? Where this, this is the Saturday before Thanksgiving today. No, it isn't. The 22nd is. This the th Thanksgiving's the third Thursday of every, of every November. Yeah, we're the Saturday. Be 27, no, no. 7 times it, 3 is It's 21. late this year. It's the last week of November this year. No, it isn't. Bill, yes, it is. It isn't. I bet you right now, half our listeners aren't even listening because they're fucking asleep from all the damn turkey. No. That's my cell phone. I'm going to find out when this is. If you haven't noticed, we're pre-recording this show yes. from uh, Washington, D.C. So we're actually pre-recording it a Son few of a weeks. Bitch, you're right. Of course I am. A few weeks before Thanksgiving, we're, we're, we're pre-recording this show uh, in D.C., but uh, it is airing right now the Saturday before Thanksgiving. So happy Thanksgiving either way, Bill. Okay. Do you have any plans for the holiday? You know what? I'm not doing shit. <laughs> you no, not... that's my plan. This year, I actually, I usually, you know, travel or whatever, and I'm not doing it this year. I have, uh, I'm not going uh, Thanksgiving. I am, am I boring you? No, no, no. My I literally eyes... just started to answer his question. My Why don't I shut my damn phone from, off? from uh, my glasses. So you're, you're going to lay around the apartment in Los Angeles? Yep. That's what I'm going to do. Is... And I'm not going home for Christmas, and I'm not working New Year's. Fuck everything. I'm working New Year's, and I'm going home for both of these holidays, but that's all, you know. I'm a kid still. I'm I'm 31. I still get the spirit, you know? To do what? I don't know. To eat a f eat some turkey and what are you, 31? some presents. Yeah. That's right. I'm 40, dude. Yeah. My mother's, like, upset that I'm not going home for Christmas, but it's like, what, what am I supposed to do? It's go, Christmas. Go, you there should... and, go there and get a racetrack, Joe? <laughs> you should go home for Christmas, dude. No, it's there's Christmas. something pathetic. Dude, there's something pathetic about... Four Going home for Christmas at 40, not married with no kids, dude. You're a loser. That's like being 23, still hanging out at high school. I Where are the parties, man? <laughs> it's the same thing, dude. That is it's the holiday equivalent. I'm not doing it. I don't think I'm going to see my parents again until I'm married and I have kids and I just do what okay, everybody so else is doing. And you're never going to see your parents huh? again. <laughs> why, would you, why, would you predict, why would you predict such an awful future for me? Bill, do you know, do you know I, have, I have a guy who every couple of months sends me an email and says you're a miserable human being and you're gonna die alone. Ooh. And every time it it just hits me right in the chest. It, uh, it is the charmer, perfect. Eh? It's the perfect. <laughs> it's the perfect heckle because I'm never ready for it, dude. This is what Christmas is or the holiday. The holidays. Oh yeah, you are. define it. No, no, I'm just saying you, you should spend it with the people that you love. And if if that means you go home to your family and hang out with your family, then you go home and hang out with your family. It it's not. There's not some rule that says if you're of a certain age and not married yet, you're not allowed to see your parents yeah, on totally, Christmas. Yeah, totally. There totally is. If somebody is 40 years old and they're not, they're not married and they're hanging out with civilians at the at the mall, they they think you're gay. <laughs> That's what they say. What are you? What are you a fag? You get that as they're eating their, they, these people allegedly love you. You get that stuff, and then you just get like, what's wrong with him? Why is he still drinking? I I don't know. I Joe, would... you know what? You know what? You know what? Christmas has become to me a giant mirror. That I look into that just says you're a fucking loser, man. It's like the reverse of uh, Snow White. What is wrong with you, Doesn't dude? Doesn't that? Seriously. Go see your parents. It's Christmas. I have 40 fucking Christmases in a row. I know what they look like. I know oh what they look God. like. I, why don't they Bill. come and see me, Joe? Cause, when when cause, they were 40, they well, shut up. When they were 40, they didn't go see their parents. Because they were married and had a family that they had to exactly. tend to. Exactly. But you don't. Exactly. Who is this? Come on in, sir. Somebody's coming into the studio. Uh, this guy, he's got a All beard, right. and he's got headphones. You a DJ? What do, what do you do? He's blushing. I like him. This is a... Uh, oh, it's the guy who was supposed to be here. Okay. Ah, uh, he was late. Where were we at the fucking Bonnaroo Festival? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he looks kind of like a hippie. What's your he name, does. man? He just washed Hi, the... Hi, Mike. He he's, just washed, seems... washed the mud off. He seems like a nice guy. Mike, I'm Joe. Everybody introduce yourself to Mike, please. Melba. From the improv is Hi. over there in the corner. Oh, is this how it's going to look? Bill Burr. Don Wicklin. 
Dan Rickman ah! just walked in dressed like, like a, an, an, No, he's, he's just like an Armenian. <laughs> Don came blazing through the door. Yeah. Go for it, man. Can I ask you guys a question? Are you guys at any point going to just act like there is an actual radio show going on here? You're just going to burst in here and just totally let our listeners know how, how little respect you have for our show? <laughs> Why are you dress like you're in High School Musical? I don't like it. <laughs> the funniest part, did this, did this not put the whole radio show in place? Eh? When you go, hey, Don, since we're here, can we just go up to payroll and get our checks after the show? And he goes, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's unreal. He thinks it's hilarious. XM that get, slapping us right yeah, into place. Then we, get, then we gotta get paid. Yeah, thanks for all the support on the XM Uninformed Tour. When, when are you gonna send those banners? Don, where are you going? Yep, later. Have a good show. Bye-bye. <laughs> okay. See we'll you guys. See you. All right. Bye. So we're gonna have thanks, a new man. engineer every couple right. of minutes. Good we Lord, the Joe. new engineer. Joe, you know, we, we do quality radio. I don't know what it is. I don't we know if do. this, is that the way you say it in the industry? I could. Okay. We get, we we. Are you There's going, probably I, a term I, do, for do, it. Do you have a microphone that you can talk? Because you're not going to sit there with your beard and not chime in on this show. <laughs> okay, that's not how it works around here. Oh, she does. Yeah, we can share that. Okay. Well, can What's you pass the, it over to him? Because I really. Well, let's let's just just pass it over. I want, I want to hear about his holiday plans. Basically, oh, this is going to be nice. This is going to be good for the recording. <laughs> the creaky XM mics. We're at the XM studios, people. Yeah, he was just giving me shit. Uh, we were on a nice, you know, we were on a nice little roll there. And mm. uh, then Don Wicklin came in. He really did look like he was going to pound on a jukebox, didn't he? <laughs> he came in blazing, man. Arms, chest out. You know what it was? He knew we were going to make fun of him. So he had that fear, they're going to make fun of me. You attract what you fear. <laughs> and to get the show back on track, Joe, that is why I am not going home for the holidays. Why? Because I'm going to attract what I fear. What do you fear? People are going to say you're a loser alcoholic and that, you know, and we're starting to think you're gay. Bill, why would they say you're a loser? What are you going to get drunk at the at Christmas dinner? No, Joe, None I, of you ever love me. Are you going to No, I don't, I don't No, no, I'm a happy drunk, Joe. Believe it or not. Well, what you, who's going to say you're an alcoholic? Who would say that? Your family. Uh my my inner voice. Jesus. Dude, go see your parents at Christmas, man. You're getting older. I'm not trying to be cryptic, but like there's, you know, you're not going to have a lot of these left, Joe, dude. I'm doing a college gig. Ugh. In the same state. I can see him then. And I don't have to get on a plane with 900 fucking fat people with presents. When are you doing a college gig? Huh? When are you doing no, the college No, let's, let's talk about, Joe. Let's talk about the unbelievable, <laughs> horrible shape that people are in this country. No, uh, wait let's a minute. Let's talk about that. Bill, and stick talk about on one. Them, no, them loading onto the plane with all their crap in the overhead compartments. <laughs> all their, their big slacks that folded up. That thought just trailed off. You were hitting it hard in the, in the front part of that statement, and I why thought you were you going somewhere. Why can't you just roll with it, Joe? Dude, are why, you talking... Why are you acting like you're interrogating me? Like, you have to keep it on track. Are you I can talk about fat people on an airplane Are you I talking to. about fat people on the airplane at Christmas or, or in general? I don't under... I'm not following you. Well, you're... in general. Not, not No, on Christmas, dude. Last year, this is what happened. I went okay. to LAX like three days before Christmas to fly out. Not even. It was like six days before Christmas, and I, I felt like, okay... You know, I'm doing a smart thing here. Six days before, I'm going to be fine, dude. I went there. It looked like the government had collapsed. <laughs> it was insane, dude. The line was out the door. Oh, my God. And every, all these guys, you know. Did, did you ever see those people? They, they, I don't even know where the, where the fuck they're from. They don't even have a suitcase. They got that beat up cardboard box with like 12 rows of duct tape going yeah. around it. Yeah. And then they have to take it out like, oh, you're going to charge me. I don't. Uh, da, da, da. Like that shit is in front of me. And it, do it doesn't put me in the holiday spirit. I'm still upset about it 12 months later, 11 months later. This is this is my point. If you're willing to go through all of that horse shit to go play a college in Poughkeepsie or whatever it is, I would I would be willing to go through it to go home and see my parents at Christmas time. That is equally important. Just because there's not money no, involved no, doesn't no, mean it's no, not no. worthwhile. No, this is what, this is what, Joe, I'm killing two birds with one stone. I'm going to fly out there. It is not going to be the zoo that it is during the holidays. I get on the plane, I go out there, I do the college gig, and I'm going to hang for three days with my parents. We're going to have a fucking great time. All right. Okay? How close to Christmas is this? Like three weeks before. All right. They'll have the lights up. I mean, Jesus Christ. That's fine. Look, Joe, we pre-record this show. I'm going to pre-record Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Going to show up like like three days before. All like right, three weeks before. All right, just but just know if you need a place to go, there's always a seat at our table. And what am I, John Candy? Mom, and planes, trains, mom and makes quite a feast. No, I want to create my own life. I got a great girl, and we're going to have a little Christmas tree, 
and it's, it's all I have to buy one present. Ugh, it just sounds awful. Just sitting in sunny L.A. and just no, no Joe, fucking when, when, snow. When you, oh, yeah, well, let's interrogate you now. When, when are you going to cut the umbilical cord? Never, dude. I'm, you, I'm, I'm never. I'm, I'm, now, after I, I love seeing my... Me, hang on a second. You just got the sympathy. Nah. Because I'm right. From Mel... I'm right. You, 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 you spend the holiday with your family, dude. It's the, it's the one time a year that you guarantee you go home and you see everybody. Yeah, but at some and, point, dude, you, you make a break from your family. Whether you have kids or that. not, dude. I don't agree with that. You think Kenny Rogers still goes home for Christmas? <laughs> Kenny Rogers? Why Kenny Rogers? I don't know. I just the first old guy that but popped th in my head. This is my wow. Did he get bad plastic surgery? This is my he did. He looks like that chick on uh, uh, Desperate Housewives. This is my point. Um, those shiny faces, those Botox faces. Um, this is my point. Laminated. If you have your own family and it's like about your kids now and everything, that's different. I'm saying, but if you don't have that. You go home, you, you go with, to your family, dude. You know what, Joe? I don't say this about you a lot, but you're a follower. <laughs> you really are. You're, you can you're, interrogate you're, me about you're, Christmas. You're, you're, doing, you're doing what... what... Joe, I, you no, should... No, I like I went home at 31. I went home at 31, but dude, uh, it's enough already. Enough. All right, already. all right. Okay? I got to make a break. All right, that's fine. Last year, I actually put stockings up. I actually... Cre and it was this really nice environment in my apartment, hanging with my girl, having a great fucking time, and then I got to just pack up and go to Vietnam. Terrible. Is your girl going to go back east for no, Christmas? No, we're chilling. So she's, and she's cool with that. She's, yeah. Okay, all right, then hey, you're doing what yeah, you're doing. Yeah, her dad's out there. All Maybe, right. Maybe, Joe, there'll be plenty of honey and ham to go around. They got <laughs> ham in L.A. too. They got ham in L.A. Yeah. <laughs> all right. I love that too. People just, oh, it's sunny L.A., man, it's going to suck. Like it snows every year. It never does. No, but last I, time it snowed on Christmas, Joe? It last doesn't. year. And you're always disappointed. I like, no, 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 but I like it to be cold, and it just feels wintry, you know, you're whether it's, there's snow or not. I'm you're not, just gay. In a weather way, not in a You're doing your way. bit. You like, you like, I'm doing what? You're doing your own bit now that you get mad about at me. Well, that, no, you that's just my, did, that's, What are you, a fag? You just did that bit at me. But well, if you listen to the joke, Joe. I try not to. It's, well, then don't fucking reference it. <laughs> I can't believe you let him make fun of your beard, and he's sitting here with his Chinese vintage Star Wars shirt it's on. It's an awesome shirt. Huh? Yeah, if you're at a comic book festival. Yeah, do you think Do you think this dude is not going to think this shirt is cool? It's huh? an awesome I'm say how shallow you are. What's his name? Michael. He's right, he's right. Yeah. Okay. Did you know that, Bill? No, and I was hoping you, you'd forget, and then you'd send it back over to me. We have a funny little moment. Well. But you had to be Mr. Smarty Pants <laughs> over there. I, I ruined the joke. Michael, how far into the show are we? Evidently, every 25 minutes, we have to take a break. So our uh, friend uh, Danny Boy, back in New York, can edit this up. We're about 16 minutes in. 16 right. minutes in. I think it's been a strong 16. What do you think, Mike? Absolutely. I mean, I just walked in here, but it's been pure it's gold just, since it's Absolutely. I, I like Danny, this. Uh, <laughs> Danny. <laughs> sarcasm. I like that. Danny, we miss you, man. Danny's not here, obviously, because yeah. we're in D.C. And, and we he was a little hurt, too, Danny. because when I, I went to, uh, I went to, you know, set this thing up, I figured we're in D.C., I called Don Wicklin. I figured I'd call the guy with the moose and the fancy T-shirts. <laughs> right. And his Mad Max belt. <laughs> <laughs> he really... <laughs> He is such a mess of a human being, Tom Wicklin. I love him. He really is. He's just like, he's a mess. Isn't he on like his 17th marriage? Ah, oh, Jesus. Uh, you know, I love I that know guy. I want to do this right now. Why? I don't know him as Joe, well as you do, we so asked, I'm afraid we asked to. to get paid. He laughed in our face. <laughs> and now, now you're going to show sympathy? No, I'm just, I don't know him that well. And I don't, I don't want to get into his you personal shit. You know him shit. well. You know him well enough to know that we don't, you know, that we, we got to wait <laughs> That he laughed years. at us to get our contract Joe, what, what are the odds we'll get paid for this show before 2010? No way. Yeah, no, no way. way. Yeah, the merger. No way. The merger. <laughs> Photosynthesis. Barack will be out of office by the time we get paid for this, which, by oh, the yeah. way, I didn't... Everybody kept calling, yeah, once January 20th comes, I didn't know what they were talking about. I literally thought that Barack was like, thanks, everybody, I won, and woke up the next day in the White House, like moved his shit in the next day. <laughs> oh, my God. I didn't know Bush was president what do you think until Bush, January. Do you think Bush just stands there the night of the election with his bags packed? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and now, McCain, they wrap this quick, McCain we can make the 11 p.m. Like the, the waiting room of the Oval Office, just sitting there <laughs> rubbing their hands together. How does it look? Like they're waiting for a kid to be born? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, what did, what did you, Joe, did you vote? No, I never vote. Ugh. I never yeah. vote. He still won. He won. What, was that the guy? Uh, can you can you put a, can you, you got to swing it around. Put Melba on here. Here we go. Melba from the improv. It was nice enough to give us a ride over here. Hello. Uh -huh. Hi. Okay. How you have you? an amazing radio personality. Yeah. 
Shining. She's got a good voice, she too. She does. You have a really nice voice. Thank you. I'm trying to give you, you're getting all defensive. Look, at your arms are crossed. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No. You loosen up. See, just put... if, I, if I raise my voice, then it won't be a great radio voice, because I have a really naturally high voice. Oh, is that what it is? I'm trying to keep it radio. Oh, you're trying to keep, you're going late night DJ on us. All right. <laughs> so what do, you, what do you think about uh, Joe didn't, uh... first of all, is she close enough to the mic or no? Uh, she can be a little closer. Okay. There I am. This is really just one of the most unprofessional shows we've had, but it's still it's a good all right. One. Is it? Is it? Oh, is it our fault? No, it's not. Me no, 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 not at all. It's Michael's fault. Okay. He should have said something. Let's blame him. <laughs> I did not. I did not vote. What do you think of that? I think everybody should vote right now. It's so pivotal. Like you could have been a part of that big. What is it? Like eighteen to twenty-nine. You know, 30 He's thirty-one. To Thirty. He's thirty-one. Eighteen to thirty-one. Youth of America vote. But, you know, see, this is him holding on to his youth. He still goes home for Christmas. He's not registered to vote. He can't deal. He's wearing a Star Wars shirt. I, I like mean, the shirt. Thank you. It's an uh, awesome shirt. You know, one of the and improv games is you never say no. You always say yes, and you go with it. Or it just That's what he does. That was a nice three-minute little rant we could have had. But, you know... <laughs> Thanks to you, you just gotta be like, you know what? I actually, I think it's I a nice like shirt. shirt. It's and with, I, and with I sewn well home. together. I believe in going home for Christmas. Thank you. Well, wow, my you know family comes up to see me all the time. This Thanksgiving, though. How uh, old are you? I'm 29. That's acceptable. 29 is acceptable. But you're gonna start getting the questions. When are you get married? What's going on? I get those questions constantly. Constantly. Why would you? Questions. Why would you go back there for your own parental? Because I uh, love my parents and I like seeing my aunts and uncles and my whole family at one time. It's a nice. It's just nice, dude. Nice. It's you're a go nice home for time. The, the parental Guantanamo Bay and get waterboarded about how you're not married yet. You deal with it. Do you have an older brother or sister? <laughs> yes, I do. Like usually, they get the pressure that you don't have to get, right? Well, they've given up on him. Oh, because <laughs> see, my sister—they're trying to make her have a baby. Me, they're just like whatever. They don't care. Oh, they don't care. No. Do you feel left out like Jan Brady? No, I feel great. You do? I, they'll just keep attacking her. <laughs> Are you the middle child? No, I'm the youngest. Oh, you're the baby. I'm I the told baby. you. I, I saw that about you. Why? You have that adorable uh, youngest sibling vibe. Oh, gosh. You really do, you don't like compliments. Why are you looking away? Look I me in the like eye compliments. as I tell you how adorable you are. But I'm not like... She's looking down. She can't do it, Joe. Uh, it's all right. Take it. It's all right. Thanks, Joe. Take it. <laughs> Take the fucking compliment. <laughs> Um, Why the fuck would you think after right the second he gets elected? I wish they did it that way. That would be hilarious. It'd be dumb. like a reality show. It'll be like I'm a, dumb, I love Bill. I'm a fucking idiot. I don't, I don't know. I just never. Th it was just you know. There's just things you never think. You never stop and go. How does that actually work? How does that happen? I just never thought. Just oh, we talked things. about this the other day. What do you? The, the difference between actually being stupid and the difference. <laughs> there's a fine line between being stupid and not giving a shit. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're not a dumb guy. I mean, you're not a bright guy, Joe. You can't, like, go that far. But you're not a dumb guy. So, like, the reason why you didn't know that, that doesn't... I, and my, a lot of people would think you're a fucking idiot because you don't know that. But I, I, no, I don't, No, I Joe. just don't care. I take... Yes! You don't give a I shit. I just don't you care. You didn't vote, obviously. I didn't vote, no. I don't... Oh, uh, somebody got a sticker the other day, huh? I, I did. Did you put that on your forehead, walking around? It was no. right on my chest, on top of my Barack Obama shirt, yes. Do you know I went down there, and, and they said that I uh, they couldn't find my name? I wasn't registered? See, so you're supposed to look that up. Huh? I wasn't registered where I was supposed to, and had to look it up. Oh, they, oh, they, they tried that scam on you? They did. Did you think it was a racist thing? No. I felt it was reverse racism on me. DC's in quadrants, so... Huh? Uh, they just put me in the wrong quadrant. Oh, they put you in the wrong quadrant? Like oh, northeast, okay. northwest, southeast, southwest. They put me who, in who northwest. Who'd you vote for, McCain? No, Obama. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, McCain. I feel like Sarah Palin has some really bright ideas. She needs to bring um, that Alaska. I felt bad. I, uh, I felt I, I bad for the, McCain uh, at the end. I really felt sorry for the guy at who? the end. McCain. I felt sorry for him. I felt sorry for I would have voted for Mac Obama. What did you say? When he said the Mac is back, I was like, you know he lost. <laughs> I would have, yeah. <laughs> I would have voted for Obama had I voted, but I, I, I felt bad for McCain. I really, it, it was just sad. It was. I, I, I didn't dislike him, but I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not into the two parties, dude. I did a write-in. I wrote in uh, Ron Paul because uh, <laughs> I overheard somebody say something in a bar about him that I liked, and that's how I cast <laughs> my vote. <laughs> You know what I like? I don't like to vote for either the Democratic or the Republican because then that gives me license to bitch no matter what happens because I didn't vote for him. And I yeah. always have the out. Yeah. You know, because I am definitely, I definitely lean left. So my brother will give me shit like, see, he's not doing nothing. Then I, I have the out to be like, I didn't vote for him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Carlin had that, that bit about, uh, 
about not voting and, and saying, you know, people say if you vote, you have the right to complain. And he's like, I, I, I think it's just the opposite. I <laughs> had nothing to do with any of this, you know. I, it, that gives me full right to complain. I agree with that, 100%. But I, but that's not why I don't vote. I just don't. Do you know, this, I think this, it's all facade. Joe, Joe first. We're talking about Joe. Joe did a college gig in Mississippi, okay? Went to Mississippi, got on a plane, flew to Mississippi, drove or was picked up, was in Mississippi, left, and he still can't find it on a map. He couldn't find it on a map. I mean, he could if it was written big enough. And that's another one of those things where I really thought that that meant you were a moron. And then I just realized that Joe not only does not give a shit about when the president moves into the White House, he also doesn't give a fuck about, about where, where Mississippi is. is. Uh, yeah, it's it's, but it's not like I don't give a fuck like, fu like fuck Mississippi. It's just like... I don't like. I can't remember capitals. I've been tested a million times through my, you know, through my schooling career or whatever that, that on capitals of countries and states and whatever. And I did well on the test because I memorized them, and then they're gone the next day. The capital, you know what day, I mean? Like the capital song. Yeah, math like that. formulas. I can't remember shit. Like, but I could tell. I was telling Bill the other day. I could tell you. I actually we should do this quiz right now. This would be fun. I could probably tell you the real name of the majority of popular rappers from the late 80s through the 90s and where they were from. <laughs> like, seriously, that, quiz me. That is interesting. Quiz um, me. Somebody, Trace, nobody gives a tea. shit. Ice T. Tracy Morrow is his real name. He was born in New Jersey. The Puerto Rican fat he, guy in the fat boy. Hold on a second. But he grew up in he grew up in uh, Los, South Central Los Angeles. Why would you know that? Because I was a huge rap fan. Ask me another one. Um... I told you the fat, fat the fat Puerto Rican. Guys. I wasn't into the fat boys, and they were they were See? more. Bam! Come on! All right, and no, no, you're just as dumb. Come but on! They're like a group. It's not like a rapper. Yeah, yeah, so what, what are we one. up to here with with like minutes here? Is it almost up to twenty five? I think we're about twenty four. Yeah, right. he's supposed to do the sign. All right, he didn't know. He wasn't. He was. Why not? Well, well at right. some point. All right, fine. Joe, nobody cares. No, you don't care. I, yeah. We, no, that, that's the same rude. way you don't care. Well, I asked you the, the, she asked you one. You said I could name most of them. No, you, the and, second and I said late in, 80s fucking... into the 90s. The fat boys are early 80s. No, they're the... not. They're not. They are not. They're not early 80s. Run they're DMC. about mid 80s because they huh? had those movies going into the 90s. Yeah, they had movies. I mean, they're big Disorderly enough. Stars, it was a like fun, it's a funny bit to, to pair up with me being dumb and not giving a shit. It's just, can we just finish it? Well, can, can we you do put a some couple? energy into it? I am. I'm, we're <laughs> doing the fucking thing. <laughs> Uh, You're talking see, about improv, not saying no, always I saying see, yes. It's, it's, it's you name. just said it's Clarence, and he's from New Brunswick, New okay, Jersey. Bro. That's what you were doing, Joe. With some you, I hate when you do this. I hate when you think <laughs> something's not funny and you just stomp on it, dude. Joe, you've stomped on like three things in the first 25 I minutes that I had. Today that you, you're the one saying improv. Let's say yes. Let's say Let's some joke. It. You know what I was thinking? That 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 T-shirt that you have with the Chinese writing on. You ever think like the kid? In the sweatshop labor was like so tired he actually yeah. started sewing in his own language. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ask me another rapper. Is Joe, that all we, staying we, in? We, we, look, we we got it. Yeah. Joe, that's the show, man. We fucking right. argue. This show is so t it's lousy so far today. You know all what? Right. You now you're gonna pout. You're gonna take your ball. <laughs> no, I'm not pouting. I'm pouting. Not. You're pouting. I'm not pouting. It's just we're so disjointed. That's all. Joe, this is one, one of the reoccurring problems that we've had on the show. Okay, aside from me being a little cunty has been that you sometimes will sort of take it into an AM radio talk show Bill, vibe. It, but, Bill, you, you're, you're not giving it 10 seconds to develop. You immediately are stomping on something and not giving it a chance to go anywhere. Be and you just said five minutes ago that you say yes to improv, not no. You don't shut it down. And I but if, if it's bombing, it wasn't bombing. Joe, we, I could hear truckers oh, driving Christ off the Bill. road as we were doing that. Jesus Christ. All right, listen. All right, let's do to, everything you want to do. Let's, let's uh, you control No, everything. you know what? We will come back with Joe when we come back from the Go break. Ahead. Joe DeRosa and his hilarious bit of how he can name most of the it rappers. It was just names. to Shut prove your mouth. the You're point. listening to Uninformed. Keep it here. It's Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. This is Serious Speedway with Dave Moody. Mike Wallace. I'm working on things from a personal side of things. I'm trying to find a sponsor that Mike Wallace can race next year. The indications have been given to me by Jermaine Racing that if we don't have a sponsor, I won't race for them. They've got some other things on the hook or some other people bringing some money that are, you know, they're going to do some things with it appears. 
Sirius Speedway. Weekdays, 3 to 7 Eastern on Sirius NASCAR Radio 128. Now part of the best of Sirius. A great number of our immune system cells are in our digestive tract. Friendly bacteria help keep these cells healthy and fend off bad bacteria. Probiotics replenish the friendly bacteria, often lost due to everyday stress, antibiotics, x-rays, oral contraceptives, and poor dietary habits. They also help reduce intestinal distress, such as heartburn and bloating. Dr. O'Hara's Probiotics 12 Plus is one of the world's leading brands of probiotics. Dr. O'Hara's Probiotics 12 strains of bacteria protects our immune system so that we are less likely to get frequent colds or flu. Fermented for three years, Dr. O'Hara's Probiotics 12 Plus capsules do not need refrigeration and are the perfect traveling companion. Dr. O'Hara's Probiotics 12 Plus is available at Vitamin Shop and other fine health food stores nationwide or order online at probiotics12.com. Dr. O'Hara's Probiotics 12 Plus. Get it today. This product has not been evaluated by the FDA and is not intended to treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Results may vary. Stuck in a dead-end job? Your career just not going anywhere? CUNet, the college and university network, understands. So CUNet makes you this promise. Give us a call, and we'll help you pinpoint your interest. Locate schools that meet your needs and get your career back on track in just minutes. CUNet helps you take that first step towards furthering your education and career. CUNet will search thousands of schools with programs ranging from certificates and trade programs to doctorate programs. Then, CUNet puts that school in touch with you. CUNet's service is always free. Take the first step toward getting your life and your career moving forward, all in one simple, easy step. Pick up the phone and call us in the next 30 minutes. Operators are standing by. Don't put your life on hold any longer. Call CUNED at 800-719-0442. That's 800-719-0442. CUNED advisors are waiting to take your call. 800-719-0442. Get the stinky dog away from me. PD stopped eating. All his hair fell out. Mounds and mounds of fur. Our hairballs have hairballs. Bad breath and bad gas. Chew himself raw. Sticky, gooey, smelly. She scratched incessantly. At least $5,000 in vet bills. I heard about Dynavite on this radio station. Yeah, I just called my wife. I said, dear, you got to check out Dynavite. I logged on to D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. The omega-3 fatty acids, zinc, probiotics. There's flaxseed oil. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Six days later, my dog's ear problems were cured. The shedding has stopped and the itching has stopped. His breath was better. His gas was better. Tons of energy. No more bad smell. She has gotten this puppy look. Her coat has sheen. Everything we tried failed except the Dynavite. My vet was completely blown away. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. Hi, this is The Gay, and when I need an XM radio or accessories, I I visit MyRadioStore.com. That's 866. I need XM. Or or visit MyRadioStore.com. You got to lie to the baby. You got to lie to the baby. Oh, got to lie to the baby. Lie to the baby. Move on. Woo! Hey! 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 All right, what's up? We're back on uh, Uninformed, uh, which I think, personally, I think has been a good show so far. I got a little testy before that last <laughs> break. <laughs> Um, can we just can, do can, one more, just one more rapper? Absolutely, but so we can at least, can we, we're going to at least hype what we got going on today. We actually, yes. one of our guest today is our, our most unreal guest so far. We actually have Joe Perry from Aerosmith. Yes. Is going to be calling in the show uh, here at the top of the hour. I guess it's going to be in like another 10 minutes. I don't know how the hell they're going to edit this, but uh, <laughs> isn't that a great intro? Yeah, we have Joe Perry from Aerosmith <laughs> who's going to be uh, informing be us. He'll be here. We're very excited about it. And uh, we're also going to talk about our fantasies of what it's like to be a rock star because that's the the whole premise of the show is that we talk uneducatedly if that's even a word about a subject and then our expert comes on and shows how dumb we are so today we are going to try to talk about what we think it's like to be a rock and roll legend and then joe will come on and tell us what it's really like and maybe we'll be right maybe we'll be wrong 
Who knows? And Bill? that's where the excitement is. Yeah, so. I don't know. I don't know. So, Joe, what's the real name of uh, <laughs> Just one Heavy more. D? <laughs> I don't know, Heavy D. I didn't listen to Heavy D. <laughs> Every guy I bring call. up. I know You're all You're bringing up the <laughs> shittiest rappers of all time. <laughs> this is the thing, Joe. This is what I'm bringing up. I'm bringing up the guys who actually crossed over into my world, which means they were hugely famous because I wasn't listening to that stuff. That's why I was directing so, the bit towards huh? her because she will be able... She'll come up with the... I have a feeling she's going to know the people that I was into. Joe, Jesus Christ. I what? mean, I'm not in 100% into hair metal, but, you know... I know the fucking guy from White Lion Guitar. His name was Vinny something. He's from Long Island. Let her ask famous. me one more, and then, All right. we'll, then it's All over. Right. Well, ask, ask him one more. Okay. Um, Please pick one that he doesn't know. Maybe he won't know. Mm. Any day now. What about Flavor Flav? Flavor Flav's real name is William, I believe, Horton. Wow. And he is from, uh, I think they're from, I think he's from Staten Island in New York. I know he's from New York City, one of That's the boroughs, but I think it's Staten Island. Did all you right. just by yourself with a group of people? Like, you all just, like, did this? No, I just was so obsessed with rap music when I was a kid. I'd read, like, any group I was into, N.W.A., for instance, Ice Cube, O'Shea Jackson, okay. Easy e Eric Wright, Dr. Dre, Andre Young, uh, Lorenzo uh, Parliament, I think, is MC Ren. Okay. You know, I just knew it all. I, did, I just, I would read the liner notes. I'd read all the shit. I just knew everything. Because I cared about it. I didn't care about... Fucking remembering what the capital of Oklahoma is. Still could Oklahoma City, maybe? Is that what the capital is? Do you know, Bill? Why are you not speaking right I'm now? I'm just letting you go with your bit. That's it's gonna go. Bill, it's not a bit. It was uh, dude, what the what is going on with the phones? Jesus. People walking in and out. Is that gonna be on the air? Do you have any idea how huge this radio show is that you're walking? We have at least eighteen listeners. Is that Huh? Is that going to be on the no or air, those phone noises? I, I imagine it is, Joe. I mean, if we could hear it, they could hear they it, right? They could hear it. Right, they gotta have, they're having like, a conversation over here. What's, what's, <laughs> what's going on? Let's just... this is, I thought we were going to come to the headquarters. <laughs> they're talking about do you, work, you work here at the XM? I do. You look like a UFC guy. You used to fight or something? No, Tank Abbott. Tank Abbott, yeah. When I used to have a go-to, people used to say that. I thought you were going to say you were related to him. You're not? No. And what, what, are you, what are you talking to uh, Michael about? The phone. I just want to make sure you guys are taking care of phone. Oh, when the phone comes in? Okay. We're just going to work that out. <laughs> Over there in the corner. <laughs> this is a train wreck today, dude. Yeah. How Didn't many more people? Think... Honestly, how many more? Like, I'm not trying to be a dick or anything, but how many more people are just going to kind of come walking in and out in, in the oh, middle? So this is the last one. Okay. I'm a big fan, by the way, huh? so I'll enjoy that. Oh. Well, okay. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it. You, you were just. Actually, we're taping a show right now that's going to go out and. That's, how, that's what I do when like... I'm a fan of things. You just sort of burst in yeah. on it? <laughs> yeah. Just sort of walk in and just sit there yeah, awkwardly. I'm a big fan. <laughs> Went to the Bad Religion show. Took a piss right in the front of the fucking yeah. stage to show them I'm really into their shit. They were halfway through the set. You came in and started adjusting the microphone yeah. levels. Jumped yeah, on just stage. Just to make sure the microphones are okay. <laughs> Pulled the bass player off the fucking stage <laughs> in the middle of their closer. <laughs> yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan. I just think I, you know, I'd barge right in. I, you know. Didn't think I'd want to check the phones before the show started, but uh, what exactly do you have to? Is, are the phones going to be okay? Is it going to be okay? Uh, hopefully. hopefully. Wow. So this, these are the questions we've asked. I'd like to. Can we get paid? Good luck with that. <laughs> yeah. Are the We're phones here. okay? Hopefully. Hopefully. Bill, can I tell you a story about a boy that had a dream? A dream of what, Joe? Having a radio show? A dream that he had a radio show, and uh, he did his radio show with a good friend of his. In a little studio in New York, and it went pretty well. And he thought one day maybe we'll get to do the show from the big studio in D.C. And that's where <laughs> that's where you really get the that's king get the shit real, treatment. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You got the uh, and, the professional uh, level. Yeah, and you show up, and they go, "It's not really the king shit treatment. We're going to take the king out of that uh, phrase, and it's just going to be the, the shit treatment." <laughs> All right. Well, thank, people thank you, it thank it you out. for coming in. Okay. Thank you. Can, can we hang the "Do Not Disturb" sign on the outside there? Just you know. Yeah, just no answer to that yeah, question. No, I, just, <laughs> I feel like I'm auditioning to have a radio show. I, uh, I don't. I feel like we're on the Gong Show right now. All right, well, let me ask you this show. What, what, this. what do you what do you feel? What do you feel right now? What do you well, feel what about, I feel. What do you feel about? Oh, hey, look at it. I have a USA Today, Joe, right here. This is Mississippi. This is where you went. I got you. You you landed right there, Joe. Awesome. Okay. Um, <laughs> completely. 
doesn't give. This a fuck. is what I. This is what I feel. Dude, I did think the stock um, market go down again. You know, there's a real fucking chance, Joe. By the time this <laughs> show comes out, like this country won't exist anymore. All How right. Further down can it go? Let's get to. But let's get to right now. Let's save that for the third hour, and get to us talking about being a rock star, which is why I wanted to do that music bit. Well, Joe, this is the thing. When Joe in. Perry calls in, I don't want to be asking him, you know, would you like to have two-on-ones? I want to have some sort of like... Uh, no, we don't. We're just going to say in our discussions, we imagine this. Is that true or not? Let's give him something to be an expert on today. I mean, that's the whole point. Okay. You know? What do you think? I mean, what would you... Like, what, what is your honest... I think I know what it's like to be a rock star. I watched enough of those behind the musics. Yeah, that's the problem. The sort of curtain's been taken away, yeah. and you kind of... And they already told their stories. But, I mean, you know the one difference between rock star and comedian? Like, the major, major difference besides the money There's and the respect? There's looking people here at fucking XM. <laughs> <laughs> besides the money and uh, the women and all that stuff. The major difference, I thought, between being a rock and roll, whatever, and, and a comedian is that it seems like there's less, it's more carefree as, as a rock star. It seems as a comedian, there is always that stress of like, I have to get my bookings taken care of, I have to make sure I'm on the road, I have to make sure I can pay my bills, right? and I can't be a complete alcoholic and a cokehead because I got to get all the shit done, and it seems like a lot of musicians, that for some reason, don't have that pressure because your label is setting up the tour, and we're going to... I mean, dude, musicians... Yeah, that's why they always end up having no money, Joe, because everyone else takes yeah. care of the shit, and then when they come home off a tour, they get a check for like 14 bucks, because the tour, in quotes, pays for everything, and the artist is the tour, which is why I like being a com comedian. I got hiccups. Why did we eat Wendy's before we did this, Joe? <laughs> I don't know. It's another thing. Playing a band, you can eat Wendy's before you go on stage. Dude, you know How hard is it to just stand there with a bass guitar? It is difficult, <laughs> because you know what? Because you, you, have, you have to perform. You want to talk about us self-sabotage. Last night, I had to write a sketch for a show that I'm trying to get on the air. You want to write on the show. We knew we had to do the work, and what did we do instead? We drank, and then we did the work. We didn't, Joe. We, got, we drank till 3 in the morning, and I, I actually looked at my notes this morning when I had to write that sketch. It made absolutely no fucking sense. <laughs> I knew it wasn't going to, which is why I said, let's open Microsoft Word and listen to what I'm saying, and let's type out these notes and you were like, no, nah, I'm good. We're fine yeah, like Joe, this. Yeah, this is because you threw fucking 12 drinks down my throat. I didn't throw them down your throat. I was throat. the one who was like, dude, let's go home and let's write this thing. You go, come on, dude, let's have one. The most, the hackiest thing to ever say And then say you in a bar. said, let's have one more. That's what happened. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to go. I didn't want to go. It's a 50-50 thing here. That's all I'm saying. No, it isn't. I was the guy saying, let's stay clean. Fuck that. I was the guy saying, Fuck I was the guy that. saying, let's call a cab. And I was the guy drunk going, here's how we need to take care of this right now. And you said no. So it's a 50-50 split, dude. We both tried to act responsibly at different times, and the other one blew it off. And whatever. That, that makes no sense whatsoever. Oh, uh, Bill. How come every time I make a point against you, it makes no sense Because, whatsoever? Joe, my point was let's stay sober and let's get this thing done. And your point is, well, after we both got shit-faced, I made a responsible move. Yeah, I was saying, look, here, we, let's take these notes down in Microsoft Word. It'll make yeah, more sense right, for it. And yeah. you said no. I was nodding off on heroin, and that's when I said, hey, <laughs> let's wait a half hour to go swimming. And, you know, let's wait till we puke up. This heroin before we go. You swimming. want me to? You want me to go write the sketch today the way I thought we could have written it last night and send it to you because I'll do that. And then you could. I remember. Joe, you remember the part last night we when we were about. supposed to be writing the sketch and you fell asleep? No, you were on the phone for a half an hour with somebody and I fell asleep. I, I wasn't it, on the phone for a half an hour. That was your fucking brain telling you it was a half an hour. That was the whiskey, Joe. I was on the phone for like five minutes. Bill, it wasn't five minutes, bro. Because you called Nia and then you were talking to one of your buddies and it was like. No, it wasn't. It. Bill, trust me, it was a, you were on the phone for a long time, man. And then you even said, you go, look, I really got to go. Like, I have my friend here, and like we're talking. Oh, is that what I said? Yes. And did I say, you know, and Joe's so right, because Joe just said it was 30 minutes? No, no, I like no. how when you no, tell the you story, didn't... I agreed with you in the story. No, you. I didn't say anything. I didn't give you shit for being on the phone. You just were like, dude, I remember at the end of the conversation, you go, Joe, you don't remember, and I don't remember, because we were shit-faced. Bill. That's what, dude, you look like a guy at a bus station, the way you were fucking sleeping on the couch. I <laughs> he, remember. He was doing that shit, you know, you, you feel like the weight of your head. You were doing that. Listen to me. <laughs> Listen to me. You can you can say that, and that's fine. And oh, I will you. give you thank that. Thank you for giving me. I will you. give you that. But what don't try to put state? more blame on me that we ended up drunk last night. That's not fair. 
That's not fair. I said let's have one. I would have left I'm putting, after one. You know what? I'm you taking said, 49% have... of this, Joe. Fuck I'll... that. No. No. no it's be, not fuck no, that. Man it's up not... and take half the blame. You didn't have to. T I didn't twist your arm. You didn't have to have the drink. I'm not. And you said let's have more. And then you, had, you wanted to do the third one. That was Joe, your idea. Joe, speaking of rock bands, one guy, whenever one guy sobers up and the other guys aren't, they can't fucking hang out together because they're going to get sucked down into it. That's why Aerosmith, when they all, they all went, got clean together. And that's what I was trying to do with you. I was trying to get clean, man, <laughs> so we could write that sketch. And you're like, dude, let's go to the bar and have one, knowing full well that we, the only people, Apaches are the only people more weak with alcohol than you and me. If I was so drunk, if I was so drunk. You got Native American in you, Joe. I can tell you <laughs> right really, now. Joe is a gutter drunk. I really, can, I'm gonna, you know what I'm going to do? I'm you gonna are. A, I'm going to buy you a fucking raincoat. Oh, please. That's what you need. That's I could tell you right now like the Jack sketch Klugman. exactly that you couldn't remember this morning. and all. The, I could tell you exactly what it was from beginning to end. And what the wrap-up of it was, the button as you called it, because you had to explain to me what that term meant last night because I didn't know what it meant. And... And how the guys in the sketch Joe, died and all that stuff. I know, Joe, all that. but the, the bottom line is at the end of the fucking night, it wasn't done. And I was standing over your shoulder going, here's what because we need to do. And you we told me, drinking. forget it. You because told me you we didn't drinking. want to. You because said you I want... was ready to pass out because well, we were that, drunk, that's, Joe. That's, which that's is why deal. I was saying we shouldn't drink. All right. You shouldn't. I was fine. I was ready to work. <laughs> Joe, you fucking passed out. You ordered room service. You ordered room service? You ate some pizza. Because we were shit-faced. That's what we were doing together. We were fucking drunk and we didn't write. And somehow, you're sitting there acting like when you're shit-faced. Yeah, man, like you're Ernest Hemingway. No, I'm you're not. not I'm just you're saying. A, you're a fucking I'm gutter I'm saying drunk. I dealt with the booze and I you're said I was ready to write. And you said, no, I'll do it later. And I said, fine. But I was ready Steven to do Tyler the work. Steven Tyler and Joe Perry used to go at it like this? Yeah. I bet they did. Probably. Let's go write the sketch today after this. We'll Joe, go back. Too, I had to turn it in this morning. I did. I, I, I did you it this morning. You told me you had to rework on it, you said. You go, I got to fix it, and I got to change shit. So well, let's no, go change I, shit. I, I sent... I sent is, is this interesting to anybody? I, other than we, that we're just fucking yelling at each other? No. Um, all right. So we are... <laughs> <laughs> Joe, all I'm saying, Joe, is if we're going to fucking write. Let's not get shit-faced. I don't I think I'm being crazy. I don't, I don't think, think you're being, being crazy. crazy. I just got defensive when you were trying to make it sound like I was more at fault. I wasn't more at fault. That was a 50-50 venture last night. Go fuck yourself, night. man. Go fuck yourself with that. That's all I'm saying. That's, that's my point. <laughs> <You're> just... <laughs> that's my point. Yeah, no, you're not. You're trying to get me pissed off. No, I, don't, I see exactly I mean, what you're doing. Joe, you know what it is, Joe? Joe when, when somebody goes, hey, let's do the right thing, and the other guy goes, no, let's do the wrong thing. Come on, let's do one thing. I mean, Joe, can you at least say that you took the first step into hell last night? That you Bill, at least... I said I'd like to have a beer to unwind, and we had a beer, and then you that's said let's you have said another so one. Billy, not yes, what I you did. said. Do you see how you just framed that, Joe? You're like, I said, hey, let's have a beer so we can unwind. If you ever said that to me, Joe, I, I would slap you with the nearest blunt object I because you don't talk like that. Remember. You, said, you laughed. You had that fucking look in your eye. You said, come on, Bill. <laughs> ah, let's have one. You did that. You said, do you, you want to? I said, let's get a beer. And you go, you really want to have a drink? And I go, I'd like to have one. No, you didn't, Joe. That's you know exactly what, you like? what I, I said. Always, I always use good fellas as a reference. You were like fucking De Niro after they knocked off that thing. You're like, Come here, you. <laughs> Come here, you. That was your vibe. And that's when I started laughing, knowing that what we were doing was fucking stupid. That was the silent conversation that we had. But so, all I'm saying is, Joe, I'll take 49.9% of that. But, dude, you were the fucking jack off, knowing that we're both a couple of drunks who said, let's go up to the bar, like we weren't going to have 50 after that. And you weren't going to nod off with french fries in your fucking mouth <laughs> three hours later in my, my room. How gay is my room, by the way? It's because awesome. we're in DC, they have it. It looks like it's like this little mini Oval Office, and they have like this. They have like this bookcase. I don't know if you saw that with all these great books in there, but you can't get to them. They're like behind the glass. So like, I don't know what that's supposed to do. It's in case like somebody from room like service legal. comes in, yeah, I'm supposed to have the illusion like I've read all these. Books. This is this is this is this is. I, I hear what you're saying, and this is I guess what I'm a little upset about is I wanted to help you with it. And I did feel last night that I was trying to put forth the effort to help you with it. I know we shouldn't have had some drinks first. But at, when all was said and done and I was in your room and tipsy, I was still standing there like, hey, man, I got... You, 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 I were, got, you were drunk. You I were got, drunk writing a sketch, Joe. How do you think that's going to go? And I was drunk listening to you. But you wrote the sketch. You did the sketch that I... No, I wrote it this... Dude, I had to fix it, Joe. And I'm not saying, dude, we were both fucking drunk. I'm saying, I don't want to be drunk and write sketches with you, Joe. Why can't you just That's go along fine. with that? I'm fine with not being drunk, but I feel like I'm... You don't I'm, put your eyebrows down, Joe. I, I, feel like, I feel like that I'm somehow cut out of the process now of the creation of the sketch where I don't feel like I was. Like, I, I came up with the premise 
of what you went with. No. And then you jo- changed. No, I'm not, I'm Joe, I'm not. Relax, dude. You're going to get credit. What do you think? I'm Led Zeppelin credit. over here, Joe? I just want the job, you think Bill. I'm, Led Zeppelin? <laughs> I'm not no, saying you're not. Job. I just want the writing job of okay. the fucking show. Well, that was the point of the whole story, Joe. I'm trying to get this fucking thing on the air. I got just as much self sabotage as you do. Think about that, Joe. I want to get a show on the air. You want to write on the show. We have a sketch to write, so we go drink. I'm really depressed. That is the stupidest fucking thing we could have done. I'm really depressed. I'm really depressed about it. right fine, now. Fine, fine. We're getting to the real I'm depressed feelings. about that. I'm depressed at the way this whole thing has gone today. The whole treatment of XM with us today. I'm really bummed out about it, man. This whole thing has been a fucking train wreck. What did you think was going to happen when you came in? Did you think that there was going to be an excitement? Oh, the uninformed guys are here? Oh, they're finally... Th- well, I just thought that people wouldn't be coming in and out of the room and just having blatant conversations during the radio show. Joe, At least the that, that the much. The fact that we have to wait six months for checks, didn't that kind of give We're you going to payroll today. <laughs> We're going up to payroll today and, and asking for our Is checks. There, can we have wireless mics and can we go up to payroll today and try to get paid? Uh, yeah, can you do that? We'll be back with Uninformed. Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. Hi, kids. Did you miss today's Opie and Anthony show? Don't cry. Don't cry. It's going to be okay. Do you want to listen to Opie and Anthony shows wherever you go? Shut up! Shut up! Just go to audible.com. Shows are posted every single day for you to download, or you can browse their massive library for your favorite Opie and Anthony broadcast. Or if that's too complicated, you can go to opianthony.com, and there's links every single day to a fresh new broadcast that you can download. Looking to make the most of your holiday budget this year? Sirius and XM can make a little money go a long way. With tons of great new programming choices and radios from just $19.99, it's the perfect gift for anyone on your list. Your brother, the comedian, your sports fanatic dad, or cooking and crafts loving mom. Sirius XM gives them all front row seats to the most exclusive star-studded radio entertainment anywhere. Get your holiday shopping out of the way now and take advantage of great subscriber deals on holiday gift packages and great radios like the Portable Stiletto or new XMP3. Just call 866-9-SIRI-XM. That's 866-9-SIRI-XM. Or visit Sirius.com slash new radio or XMRadio.com slash new radio for complete details. So this year, make the most of your holiday budget and let Sirius and XM make your money go a lot further. Everything worth listening to is now on Sirius and XM. I was driving my rig down the interstate, had an on-time bonus, couldn't afford to be late. So to save on fuel, save time and cash, I fly by the scale house, move on past with free pass. Free pass. It's a bypass system, first of its kind. Checks my weight and my dock's driving 65. Then a green light flashes up on my dash. And while the other rigs stop, I just move on past with prepass. Prepass. With your good driving record, prepass can save you time and money on every haul. Highway sensors check your weight and certifications as you drive highway speed. If everything checks, a green light on your dash says drive on by. Try prepass free. We guarantee you'll want it along on every haul. Visit prepass.com slash XM or call 888-559-PASS and mention XM to try prepass free. That's prepass.com slash XM or 888-559-PASS. And now, another reason to switch to GEICO. You have better things to think about than car insurance. You know, like where your four-year-old hit your cell phone or why your dog doesn't appreciate everything you do for him. Yeah, you've got a lot to think about. So GEICO invented GEICO.com. It makes doing everything from updating your policy to reporting a claim fast, easy, a no-brainer. Hey, with all you've got on the brain, it's the least we could do. For a free rate quote, visit GEICO.com or call 1-800-947-AUTO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Business owners, a Mara merchant can provide your business up to $200,000 in working capital in seven days or less without the hassle of a bank. And unlike a bank, we have a 90% approval rate. Turn your future credit sales from your customers into fast cash. You can use the money for anything you choose, such as expansion, marketing, purchasing inventory, paying off debt, buying out investors or partners, acquiring other business. Call 877-469-6520. A Merrimerchant offers you a no-hassle application with simple, easy steps. 
apps. We offer multiple cash advance programs that can get your business up to $200,000 right away. With approvals as fast as 24 hours, pay back with your future credit card transactions from your customers. If you have $5,000 per month in credit card sales from your customers, you may qualify. Call Amera Merchant now to find out how much you may qualify for today. Call 877-469-6520. That's 877-469-6520. That's 1-877-469-6520. The virus is an XL channel which may contain explicit language. Channel blocking is available by calling 1-800-XM-RADIO or in XM Canada, 877-438-9677. All right, hey, this is, uh, we're back, Bill Burr and uh, Joe DeRosa here on the Uninformed Radio Show. We're very happy to have... Uh, our, our next guest, which is easily, by far, our greatest guest that we've had so far, uh, Mr. Joe Perry from Aerosmith. Joe, what's up? Hey, how you doing? Uh, we're doing good. Uh, we, just had a, we just had a big battle. I don't know if you were listening to that. Me and Joe, uh, Joe DeRosa, we were supposed to write a sketch last night for a TV show, and instead of doing that, we, uh, we decided that the better move was to get shit-faced first yeah. before we did it. That sounds that sounds uh, like it was an, an inevitable thing. Yeah, <laughs> we, we took the uh, we took the behind the music road. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, it's uh, it's actually just a you know about ten uh, percent of uh, inspiration, and the rest of it's you know getting yourself uh, nailed down in front of the typewriter or the t or the or the microphone or whatever you know. Yeah, it was. I think it was more uh, fear of success. And just not wanting to do it, so we decided that rather than uh, try to make our dream come true, we'd uh, try to down a bottle of uh, Johnny Black, uh, <laughs> and somehow, yeah, uh, that that'll work. Yeah, definitely. Hey, so you said you you weren't in the best mood today. What uh, what what's going on? I don't know. It's kind of gloomy out, and uh, it's uh, uh, the reality of uh, of. Uh, of all the world leaders just lining up, getting ready to, to take their shot at our new president. Uh, you know, I just read, read, you know, some of the headlines, and uh, and I too have to. Uh, uh, I'm in the in the process of uh, trying to get uh, get inspired to write some music, and uh, it's tough. You know, it's, try, it's tough trying to make something out of nothing. You know, oh, it's the worst. you know exactly. What I'm talking about, you know, you stand there and it's like a, it's you and the microphone, or it's you and the and the and the the, uh, uh, well, I guess it's a computer. You sit behind the computer and type. How do you, how know? Do you go? How do you go about? Like, do you, uh, like, I, I, I mean, do, how do you go about? Like, when you're writing a new album, I mean, what, what is that like? Well, do you that's just... what I'm doing. I'm trying to trying to get. Uh, uh, you know, try not to listen to, to what else, what else is out there. You know what I mean. I don't want to be inspired by it, but you know, it's good that it's good that uh, I see well, there's a lot of rock and roll out there. You know, there's a uh, uh, you know ACDC's coming out with a new record and Metallica, and uh, I don't I don't have too much hope for the uh, Guns N' Roses record. I mean, they've been they've been talking about that coming out for 14 years. So, you know, I mean. Uh, I, What's, what's, what's the longest it's taken you to, uh, to to put something out? Well, it takes. Well, so this one. I mean, this record. I don't think we've put out a, a studio album for five or six years. Right. Uh, so it's and we've we've, uh, we've we've started it and stopped it and you know gone on the road and not gone on the road and then then tried to start it again and, and so this this one's taken a while but uh, usually I mean when we were uh, like in the in the nineties uh, we had a pretty much of a system where we'd work about almost down to the day it would be three months you know what i mean you'd, uh we'd work a little bit you know get, get get some outlines for some songs and then we'd we'd all get together and uh you know pound. Do, 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 do you go into that like that that whole three-month process with like dread are you looking at that like god uh, i can't wait to get through this or do you actually enjoy it no once you get into it it's good it's it's because you see you see progress but uh it's at this point. It's we're still at the at the point of uh, you know we've been kind of everybody's been off, you know, uh, screwing off for the past year, and it's really hard get <laughs> get going again. It's like uh, you know you got to get you got to uh, climb yourself into that uh, into that place where you where you start to get inspired, you know. So I, I kind of like I I have a guitar pretty much within reach anywhere, and I have a mini disc player or a recorder. And uh, and I always have that, and I you know, and then like riffs start popping out, you know. And, uh, so 
songs that, like uh, lyrics start popping out. And so do you do, they, do you do I'll, that like at like the breakfast table? You'll be eating like Fruit Loops, any, and all of a sudden, any like time, some... anytime, anything, anything. I could be watching TV. I could be, uh, you know, I don't know. I haven't uh, seen. Uh, I mean, I have uh, breakfast around two. <laughs> uh, so uh, you know whatever. Is that what time a rock star eats breakfast? That's, uh, yeah, if I'm, if I'm hungry anyway. But it, so uh, uh, you know, it, it can be any time, and I just wander around, kind of like uh, something pops in my head. I lay it down on the on the mini disc player, then I will take that down into the studio, and uh, then try and build something out of it. And, and uh, you know, and I make myself do it. I have to do it. Or some days I'll, I'll say, look, you're gonna. You know, one way or another, you're going to write a song. It may suck, and chances are it will. But at least I'll be done with it. And at least, and you kind of keep doing that. And after a while, you kind of get into the into the groove. And you know, some and then the stuff that uh, that uh, you know that, that you're coming up with is is like a lot better than the first stuff. You know what right. I mean? So uh, that's that's kind of how it works. And uh, I mean, that's it. The day to day thing. And, uh, so today, uh, today's one of those days you're just not feeling it. Well, right now I am. I'm doing an interview uh, with some guys that are gonna, like, like I said, that are gonna uh, raise my mood at least, uh, at least. 50%. We can do that. And then uh, I'll go back downstairs with my engineer, and we're gonna like uh, pound a pound a few out, you know, and uh, turn, well, hit, hit, turn hit. the guitar up loud and, and let it rip, you know. How different is uh, how different is the process now? I mean, was it a different, a whole different? I'm imagining it was a whole different ball game. When you guys were a young new band, you know what I mean in the early yeah. days, writing a new record, right? I mean, it was was it more like all of you guys in a room at that time? Not, you know what? We really once we started the the, the format. I mean, Stephen and I have, have always, uh, you know, from the time we wrote our first song together, it's you know we've always had a kind of a uh, uh, a, a teamwork thing, uh, and he would play drums and I'd play guitar. We just, and that's what we were doing. He was over here yesterday. He was still doing the same thing, and we're, uh, uh, and that works. And then, the, then, and the other guys, you know, we each we work with with each other, and some of them, you know, everybody will have different stuff, and we'll kind of like work together in, in, you know, in different uh, different formats, and then we'll all get together in a room and start pounding the songs down and, and uh you know and sometimes with a producer and uh and that's pretty much the same as it's been when we first did it you know i mean but back then it was more to write songs that we were going to play at the clubs you know we we're going to play right. live because they you know we didn't have a record deal and uh how long did you uh how long did you play guitar before how long did it take you before you didn't suck at guitar <laughs> you know what i mean because i gotta admit like i i've started to play in the last year and a half, and I finally got to the point where I could kind of stand up and play a song, and I looked at myself in the mirror holding a guitar, and I, I almost, like, I passed out how much of a, a fucking nerd I looked like. I just, like, did you, uh, like, how long did it take before you actually looked cool playing a guitar? Uh, there's still that danger of not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, uh... What's the worst thing you've ever seen film of you doing something on stage <laughs> that you look back on and was like, "Oh my god, did I really do that?" I don't know. There's been some. There was some times when we would do. Uh, we would be off the road for for months, and then we'd get get some gig somewhere, and uh, we just you know weren't in shape, and the band wasn't playing good, you know, because we wouldn't rehearse and. Uh, there, there were a few times like that in the '70s when it was like you know, those gigs were better for God. You know, did, did you feel like hiding behind your amp at that point, or you just yeah. say to hell with it? Oh uh, yeah, I mean you just you just plow through it, and, and if the audience, <laughs> uh, you know, usually the audience doesn't know that much, notice that much of a difference because you know you kind of raise your average after a while. You know what I mean? And that's that's really what. Uh, where you, where you start getting uh, that that professional thing where you really where the show show goes must go on and you right. kind of like uh, you know you, you you basically raise the average so even if you're having a bad night for yourself it still might not be that bad overall when you know compared to what uh, the audience is, is hey how does how does that work if like the rest of the band is on and and you're you're not on I look at Brad and I go. Help me out, brother. <laughs> <laughs> Is that just a look at this point, and he yeah. knows? No, I, you know what? He just has to listen. You know what I mean? It's like we can when we're li when we're, we we're listening to each other play, and it's it's that kind of a thing. Does he give you shit afterwards on the no, bus? Not at all. No, uh, not at all. No, it's we're too too 
we, we, you know, we're too close for that. That's like well, yeah, every, I meant, everybody I meant more like, a, like like breaking balls. I didn't. Everybody has a bad night. You know what I mean? And once in a while, you know, yeah, we will. You know, if it if it's because because of somebody like really screwing up because they uh, they are uh, uh, indulging themselves, you know, and, and then it shows. That's that's one thing. But most of the time, I mean, we're 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 pretty professional about that i mean we, we really want to put on a good show and sometimes you just don't have a great night you know what i mean sometimes you get your hand on the ball and it slips out of your fingers what, what right. do you do well i gotta you tell know? you that, that night we saw you uh a couple of years ago we saw you in jones beach uh with right. uh, with motley crew you yeah. know to help you get inspired and it was like i had probably last time i'd seen you guys before that was uh I saw you at the old Boston Garden uh, New Year's Eve show with Skid Row. I don't know if you wow. remember that one. Wow. And That's you guys, a, wow. you guys were even better. Like twenty years later, I couldn't believe it. Like I went out there and like, you guys still have that thing where you, you know you 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 watch them as a band and you, and you still got that like it's just sitting in the audience. She's like, I, I wish I could do that. Right. You know what I mean? Thanks a lot. No, so uh, I'll take it's... credit for anything you write today. It's nice. Thanks. Okay, good. That's, that's good. Uh, 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 it's nice to hear, too. Joe, you really to... sound like you're struggling today, man. Like you just really, It really sounds like I can't believe like how overcast is it up there. It just really seems like there's a lot of rubbing of your brow. Like, uh, this, this... Yeah, I'm trying to, I'll, I'll probably drink about two gallons of coffee before we're done. And, uh, you know, just uh, I get downstairs and like turn everything really loud. And uh, that, that tends to work. Do, uh, do you wear earplugs or anything like that? Or you just? No. How do you guys do that, man? I played drums for like two years. Men. They got well, those, you know, they drummers, got those rock star I would ears. Not rec- I would not recommend drummers to not wear something because the drums, as it turns out, are, are drummers uh, suffer a lot more than guitar players. The, the drums are really loud. It's almost like a gunshot, you know, that snare drum and the the cymbals. It's it's really loud. And and guitar, you can get just kind of all you got to do is move over three feet, and you're not standing in front of the amp, you know. So oh, all right. Kind of kind of uh, pick your spot. And once in a while, you want to stand in front of your amp, and it sounds it sounds really good. And uh, then you've uh, then you can move over, and uh, and it isn't quite as uh, abusive. But man, when you're sitting there right next to that snare drum, there's nothing you can do about it. So. It, they, you know, drummers really take it, man. And uh, so, uh, you know, you, you got to wear something. I think. Uh, how many, uh, how many guitars uh, you got at this point? Uh, Nine thousand. Bunch, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. That was, that was nice to hear that there's like an actual camaraderie amongst musicians. Like when you, when you were saying. You know, if you have everybody's got a bad night, and it's like, do you, did he, does he break your balls? And you're like, nah, man, we're we're close, because that is the exact opposite of the behavior on this radio show <laughs> and with comedians. Yeah, I don't uh, know if you listened you to just... it. We we were pretty much trashing each other. <laughs> you know, what we need to do. We maybe we need to get like some sort of therapist for this show. Like I've seen, like Aerosmith did that. Like Metallica did it. <laughs> Well, well, of course, get it. it we, would we, take we, all the fun out of it, you know. Yeah. You guys got to sort it out yourself, and you have to do it in front of the microphone. And it's, uh, I mean, I can't believe. I don't know where you get that stuff. I mean, the last time I saw you, oh, I saw your your special. You know, the one. The, the, I don't know if you've had one since then, but uh, you know, the one that the, the uh, striped shirt or black shirt. I, I don't remember. I know you're a rock star. You don't have time to tell, and keep it, up with me. It was it was <laughs> it was funny as hell from beginning to end. And and you know the one I saw you and I saw you live and you you know at that uh that's the thing there over at uh, oh Leary, the Leary thing you know, yeah yeah and it was I don't know how you do it man it's like you you stand in there in front of like I said you you know, the that microphone man and you're making something out of nothing and it's uh. It's, a, it's all you know what it is, Joe. It's uh, it's I, I dropped the f bomb. It's all the f bomb and silly faces. Yeah, <laughs> that's basically. You know, it's funny. It's like the level of my comedy. I met I met William H Macy once at a show, and uh-huh. he was like so wide eyed, and he was like, "Jesus Christ, you're fucking crazy." I would I would do that with a loaded gun to my head. He was, yeah. he's like going off, and then finally I go, hey, "You know, Bill, uh, you've done some pretty cool stuff yourself." Yeah. Like. <laughs> Like, it's like we're talking. To, we're talking to Joe Perry, and Joe's like, I don't know how you guys stand in front of that. Mic. It's like, you know, dude, funny. You're... you know, what I love about stand-up comedy. It gets so much respect, but the gigs are so disrespectful. Like, yeah, we don't have a microphone. Can you go stand on a picnic table in the corner? Yeah, it's gonna was... be. It's gonna be broad daylight yeah. too. Hey, good luck to you. I was talking. I was talking to Patrice about it once. People look at stand-up comedy the way you look at Evil Knievel. 
You know, yeah. you're like, I can't believe that guy just jumped over six cars, but he still did it in a dirt fucking track, you know, behind some some liquor store somewhere. You know what I mean? It's never an <laughs> elegant gig or an affair. It's always yeah. A- yeah, you know what I wanted to ask you, Joe, just as far as like a geek question. What, what do you do like when when you were in like you played like the Super Bowl or when you guys played like uh, I've always seen footage when you guys played like the Cotton Bowl at that big Texas jam thing. When there's like 80,000 people, how do you not feel like you're only like two inches tall? When you, when you go out there, do you just like look down and not look at them, or are you just so cool that it doesn't bug you? Uh, you just kind of like you really can't see past the tenth row. I mean, that's the, that's the bottom line. Is the all the lights that come uh, that hit you, um, like the uh, what you know, all the rock star lights. You know, and it, right. they they uh, they reflect off the stage and they go out into the audience, but you can't really see much past that. So you just kind of. You know, and then there's this kind of dull roar, you know, from from way oh, out there. So the you back? know that they're out there. It's kind of like, kind of like standing on the beach at night. You know, you know, you see the waves just down at your feet, but you know there's a lot more to it than than that. You know that's what I awesome mean? You know, I was gonna say that, yeah. that's what it's like being. It's like you're and, playing in front of the ocean. That's awesome. So, but they, but you know, they can't get. You know, you just kind of. Uh, uh, you know they're out there, but you can't, you, and you really can't think about it. But when it's when it's televised and it's something like that, then you uh, every once in a while, it's like it's like when you're climbing up something high, you uh, don't uh, don't don't think, don't look down. You know, it's like don't think about uh, right. that you're that 40 million people are watching. Right. You know, because you just can't think that because as soon as you what's do, the, what's the most annoying thing that you uh, find like as that fans can do. Like, I know fans, for the most part, cheer on it. What, what's the most, like, as, as a comedian, obviously we hate when people heckle us or they don't pay attention. As a rock star, a musician, what's the most annoying thing that you find uh, that um, well, fans in Europe, do? Well, in Europe and in South America, they tend to uh, to uh, deem it a, uh, a sign of respect and, uh, 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 and uh, I don't know, that, that they love you by, by spitting on you. Um, and it's what? Like that. you're trying to figure that one out. But, did, did somebody tell you that before you went down there? Um, oh, they they warn you. You know, the last band through warned you, and they go, "Oh, by the way, they like to spit." Uh, so uh, you know, <laughs> carve out your area, you know, uh, like about twenty feet from the front of the stage. And uh, have and you ever performed in a third crazy. world country and you get spit on? You're like, oh god! And fucking, all do, you're gonna do, do, do is get hit once. And you uh, gotta, you know, you gotta uh, work hard to keep the uh, the bile from spewing out of your nose. <laughs> oh uh, I, I have a, uh, and I got Ebola. It, great, I got it, rock star Ebola. It's horrible, and it's like they, I think they do it in, uh, I don't know, some gigs in England. You know what I mean? When you're playing in certain parts of the country where they they really go for it, and, and also down in South America and uh, a couple of places, you know, and you just. Uh, so does that mean people in the front row? Are getting hit with people who don't quite spit oh, yeah, to the stage. Definitely. Oh yeah, and then they're, they're like hucking them up. I don't know where it comes from, man. It's like uh, I don't know if they like it's that know, train it, spotting it, sort of mucus, mouthfuls of coke or whatever they do, and they just uh, sloshing around <laughs> and and they these big gobs of whatever. <laughs> but uh, so like I said, you just kind of uh, you you know it's coming, so you kind of. Stand back away. Do you have a I'm I have, gonna get spit on outfit that you wear on nights like that? <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, special like pair, I said, you special really pair of leather pants. Back. You, yeah, they, they you know they clean the the the, the, the girls uh, that that uh, you get the stuff cleaned. You know what I mean? If you if you manage <laughs> to get hit, Stephen, who like nothing stops him, he'll still go out there and you know put on the show because you know people you know. To, you know, 100 feet, 200 feet away from the stage. They don't know what's going on. And, you know, if they see you, like, cowering behind the amps, it doesn't do doesn't do the show any good. So, he, you know, he 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 gets out there and... and Bare-chested and just takes a... <laughs> and he's dripping, you know, by the... Yeah, I have, a, I have this... Uh, I have a Faith No More bootleg from, like... I think they're in, like, Barcelona or something. And there's so much spit coming at the stage... <laughs> I mean, uh, the first time I saw it, I was like, what the fuck is that, confetti or some shit? Yeah. And I just I realized it's spit. And then Mike Patton gets right down, and he's letting the people spit into his mouth. Ah, God. <laughs> it's foul. Oh, Jesus it's Christ. It's foul, man. It's nasty. And it's slippery, and it's, like, <laughs> bad. Anyway, so that's, that's, I would have to say that's the worst. You know what I mean? We've had, 
uh, and, you know, there's the odd, you know, rubber doll, this, you know, uh, empty bottles. I mean, the odd odd things. But most people realize that that uh, you know, you throw something up there that can cause uh, uh, cause uh, death or or or, uh, or just annoy the shit out of somebody like that. That's like yeah. that. At the the show stops. So, you know, they don't want that. You know, I saw a clip on YouTube of uh, Angus Young, somebody dumping a beer on him. And, like, if I swear to God, if he could have twisted the guy's head off, he would have. But, uh, uh, you know, speaking at, like, ACDC, I read a, a, a quote from you in uh, Rolling Stone talking about how those guys opened for you when they first came around when they had, like, Bon Scott. Right. And me and Joe, we're, we're huge uh, ACDC fans. Did, was that one of the bands the second you saw them? Did you know that they were going to hit? They were, uh, you know, uh, they were... They were smoking uh, you know i back then there were you know there, there was a lot more it was all about live it was all about you know you know uh having great songs and, and right. having them go down live and and they were like I, I couldn't believe it because every song was 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 amazing and they were just you know they had like simmered it was like the difference between uh, near beer and Jack Daniels. And they were <laughs> they were Jack Daniels. You know, I mean, they they were the the real stuff. Man. So were you actually sitting there like, man, I got to bring my A game after that? You must have. That been. of course. Are you kidding? It was. Uh, uh, you know, we got to follow that. You know. Uh, what's the toughest band you had to follow uh, when, when you were coming up? When, once you guys became headliners in that, what's like? What, what are the bands that made you guys work the most? Well, besides the. Um, just strictly because they, I mean, and they did it just because the music was great. Uh, uh, of course, they put on a great show. I mean, it right. was awesome, and uh, you know, all of them. And Jesus, you look at look at Bond, and you knew that guy had put, you know, uh, you know, miles and miles and miles, right. you know, in a in a van, you know, dodging kangaroos, going from yeah. you know, <laughs> club to club, you know. Did and, you uh, did you actually uh, did you have a party with Bond Scott? Yeah. You know, oh I my God! It's the coolest thing it ever. Really hard to understand. He, he, I think he was Scottish by way of, you know, by way of Australia. And uh, uh, he, just his accent was so bizarre. And uh, but you know, the drunker we got, um, the easier it was to communicate. <laughs> and, uh, and he was just, um, uh, you know, it was it was hard to understand them all of them because they were, they were really quiet guys. I mean, they just kind of sat in the. I mean, I guess would sit in the corner with a cigarette and a guitar. He always had a guitar in his hand. And I can remember him having and they they went over to Brad's house one night they, when they were in town and and uh he had, he had a party with him and I said, How'd it go? And he said, They drank everything in the house. <laughs> and it was uh and, you know, back then we used to have you know, like we used to actually have, you know, cases of wine and you know, cases of, of uh, a Jack, and you know, you know, fairly substantial uh, rooms full of booze. <laughs> yeah, it was the seventies. Uh, <laughs> if he said, if he said that they drank everything in his, I, it was that was a an amazing achievement. And uh, you know, and they they got up and walked. You know, when the party was over, they got up and walked. Uh, to their car, and that was it. Uh, well, that was the seventies when you Jesus. you didn't really have to worry about drinking and driving because your car was so big. Right. If it, you hit a tree, the tree was the thing that died. <laughs> yeah, you, you had to get get home. You know. Joe, who was uh, speaking of Angus and these? Bill and I were talking about this last night at the bar, and uh, you, of course, being one of the guitar gods in our opinion, who who are the guys you think look the coolest playing guitar? Because Angus is way up there. I uh, my vote one of my votes was for Zappa, of course, with his you know almost seizure like approach yeah. uh, to playing the guitar. I always enjoyed watching that. Who who who's the guy that you're just like, you know, Christ, look at that dude. <laughs> look. Well, Jimmy was Jimmy Page. Um, you know, his, the guitar got the strap got longer and longer as as the, the <laughs> band got bigger, and it was uh, he was uh, he would be so into his playing that. He couldn't keep a cigarette lit because because the the sweat would draw would come come off his face and put the cigarette out and then he'd have to get it lit again and then he'd you know a new one then that would go out. And How many it, times did you see uh, did you get to see Zeppelin? Um, actually, I saw them once in uh, uh, in Madison Square Garden, probably around seventy seventy three or seventy four. Did you actually get to meet those guys? Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, and I, he has this fan. Did you did you get to drink with John Bonham? Um, no, I didn't. I didn't see him. Uh, they, they 
they uh, didn't really hang out at the at the gigs. They they would get there uh, like five minutes before they were going to go on, and uh, none of this you know backstage shit. Oh. I mean, it was just did uh, Peter Grant rough you up at all? Did you try no, to get backstage? No, they or no? Were, we we were we all kind of got along. He was uh, he was okay, and uh, you know I, I I after that I I got to know Jimmy pretty well. And then then in, in the eighties, and actually he he met his uh, his last wife. Uh, in Argentina, at, a, at one of our gigs in Argentina, he was uh, he was there. Uh, I think they were doing some promotion, and he came back to, to see to see us. and uh, And she was back there, and, and uh, he met her. And uh, so, anyway, we've wow. we've gotten to be friends since then. Well, what, what do you got uh, so we can hype your stuff? What what do you got coming up here? Um, I know you you said you guys are working on an album. I was reading on. Uh your uh, your website. You guys possibly have an upcoming tour starting in March. Is that uh, true? Probably March or April. It's going to be. Uh, we're just setting the dates now, and uh, that's uh, that's kind of the plan. You know, we're really uh, going to hey, pull, pull out all the stops and try and get this record done. You know, Joe, you can do it, man. Yeah, you can do it. You really got like you sound like you got the weight of the world on you right now. You're just like, yeah, we got to do this album, and I got this tour. Hey, Come by on, the man. Way, There's no way that you can do this for 35, 40 years having killer albums. There's no way. Joe. Yeah. You know, if you were going to dry up, that would have happened 30 years ago. Joe, by the way, this 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 should pep you up a little bit. I, uh, I'm i a big Guitar Hero fan, and I got Guitar Hero Aerosmith for my birthday. My buddy gave it to me. Oh, yeah? And uh, Train Kept a Rolling. Uh, I, I, I really... You made me curse words that I didn't even know existed. <laughs> it was so fucking hard. I was screaming. You know what was really hard was uh, Pink. Pink's one of the bonus tracks. Pink was the hardest song in the game. And I thought, you know, that's that's one of the poppier, slower tunes. I was like, Pink will probably kind of easy. I just, I just love easy. how you're talking to a, a guitar hero about playing guitar hero. A guy who can actually... <laughs> You know, Beethoven, but, I was on this Fisher Price piano the other day. But, jo yeah. but Joe, Pink, <laughs> Pink, Pink is the hardest song in the fucking game. I couldn't, like, I thought I thought it would be, you know, I, let's put it this way. I would think Train Kept Rolling or Walk This Way would have been harder to play than Pink or Sweet Emotion. I couldn't beat Pink. I was screaming at the goddamn TV. I couldn't beat the song. I got, I got to, I got to pick that up though. But uh, I also know, Joe, you, you got that, you got that, uh, the, the line of food that you've been putting out too. Uh, yeah, we're doing. Uh, uh, we've got the hot sauce out there, but we're going to be doing uh, a uh, uh, kind of like uh, 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 we call it rock and roni, macaroni and cheese kind of thing. And uh, hey, can I apologize? It, I, don't know, I don't know how it ever got how we ever got this deep into it, but it, it just was. We were having so much fun with it that, that uh, it's uh, it, you know we're gonna we're gonna do it and see what happens, you know. All right, well, I got to apologize for the bad copy. Like a, a year ago, uh, Aaron, your son, came to me like they were saying, hey, maybe we could have a comedian. I don't know if you ever told you about this, Joe, to to, to write yeah. on the back yeah. of their stuff. That was the hardest thing I ever had to do, and I finally, like, I think the stuff I turned in had, like, curses in it. <laughs> and like, <laughs> all right, that was great. That was. That oh, was you did so like good. it. I was. I was so just. I was just picturing Joe Perry looking at it, going, "Who is this fucking idiot? I'm trying to make money and That's just throwing hilarious. the container across." Well, I just like that. Out of all the fantasies that I've had about, like, what would it be like to be in like a super legendary rock band? You just hit me with one that I never would think of, Joe. Like you're like, yeah, hey, we're gonna put out some mac and cheese. Fuck it, we'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> like, just that's what I'm gonna do this month. I'm just uh, you know I'm sitting in my apartment every month like it's I gotta like pay the rent. You sit, you sit around and you kind of well you know we can't make money from selling records anymore. Right. So gotta yeah. do something. So uh, yeah, how do you feel about that? I, I know what, what do you think about it, the way ACDC went about it? Because personally, I actually went to their website. Yeah. And I ordered the album, and I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I've definitely downloaded. I did the the what, what the hell was that? The the one over there. Uh, iTunes. Not iTunes. The one where you you basically stole it. And I used to oh, get all like viruses, so I, I finally stopped yeah. because, you know, I was never one of those guys who just said, you know, I'm not, ste I'm not stealing, it's sharing. I knew I was stealing. So what, what, how, do you, how do you feel about all, all that type of stuff? Like, do you, have you guys, like, thought about maybe just uh, doing what ACDC did on, on your next uh, album, trying something probably, like that? We probably will because it seems to, to work uh, to at least sell, sell the, the, uh, the plastic, whether it's a CD. And, you know, it would be nice to do a... a uh, uh, some kind of a packaging thing. I really, you know, I have a, I have a, 
a turntable and a and, a, and uh, some speakers and, a, and actually listen to to vinyl. And uh, one of the things I miss about that is the is the the uh, the, the size of the of the uh, the, oh, the, the albums, package, yeah. you know what I mean? You get all these uh, great pictures, and you know you get to read some liner notes. You don't have to use a magnifying glass. It's uh, it's like, it's really cool, you know. And, and maybe we can do something like that, and, and do some some special releases where you got, you know, you can still put the CD in there, but maybe make right. the uh, the packaging bigger. I, I don't you know, know. You know what's funny about that? My, my I can't say the first album I ever got. The second album I got because the first album my mother bought me. Was, yeah. was sing along with Mitch Miller and the gang. <laughs> right. Had like roll out the barrel. But the second one I got was I got Aerosmith's uh, greatest hit. I remember it was that big red album. Yeah, yeah. But like I, I can't remember if they had pictures on the inside sleeve. But this was this was before MTV. So back then, because Joe's like ten years younger than me, DeRosa. Like I, like you had I had no idea what they looked like at that point. You know right. what I mean? Yeah. So you literally, uh, but like I don't know. You had to somehow like I remember looking on the back of a lot of albums back then. If they didn't have the names of the guys. Like, I remember when I first saw the Highway to Hell album, I was trying to figure out which one was Bond. Yeah, right. yeah. No, well, no, that's no. the thing. I mean, it was like back then before you had MTV and all this, all this stuff on the video, it's like you had to see them live if you wanted to actually see them moving. Otherwise, it was a still picture, you know, and it's like uh, there was a lot of magic to that, you know. I, I, I miss that that part of it, you know, but you gotta right. you got to either embrace it and move, move ahead or... Uh, Kind of oh yeah, you stuck, left behind. Stuck behind. So uh, you know, you know what I wanted to ask you about is uh, how, how come all these these older guitars? This might be too nerdy a question for our listeners. How come like you look at these these older Les Pauls and Strats and they're, they're all beat up and stuff, and for some reason they're like a hundred thousand, thirty thousand dollars, and when the new ones are only a couple, you know, couple of grand. How, how come those old ones are worth so much money? Well, because they're they're the guitars that are actually were used uh, back in the in the in the heyday of the. You know when 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 Clapton first you know played the lick that that you know turned around and you know Clapton is God written on the side of a railway railway trestle you know uh, right uh, and uh, so so those are the, those were the guitars that that they used and and uh, to actually get one that's that's from that era uh, I mean do they, they sound do differently sound, they actually do sound some of them actually do sound uh, better. Than, uh, than the new ones, and uh, but it's also because they're, they're rare. You know, they, they didn't make that many of them. Uh, when you consider, like maybe they made, I don't know, seven thousand all told. You wow. know, for for uh, for like those Les Pauls. Uh, you know, that's that's not many to go around. You know, um, and so they end up it ends up being like uh, like art. You know. Uh, you know, people. You know, it's, it's just they're not making it anymore, and there's nothing you can do about it. You know, this stuff just gets, gets, uh, and it also seasons. You know, wood, wood dries out. There's all this other, all this uh, folklore, and, and right. some of it's real, some of it's just the uh, old wives' tales and uh, that kind of stuff. But, right. but uh, for, for me, I, I, I can definitely say that I, I've played some. Some of the older ones, and they do sound better. You know, like uh, you get an old acoustic guitar from the '30s. There's, there's nothing you can do to to uh, make a new guitar sound like that. You know, oh, it's, um, so it's like wine or something like that. Exactly. It, it, you know what? I wish I had that gift where I could tell the difference. Because I got to be honest with you, Joe. You could literally play. <laughs> Something on a 1930s guitar or a brand new ukulele, and I'm so tone deaf. I'd be like, "Yeah, so, sounds sounds yeah, sounds the exact the other, same." That's the other thing. It's like, you know, do you really need to play? I mean, if if you really, if you have to listen that hard to, to notice the difference, I mean, if you if I you blindfolded me and and you know somebody played a you know a, a new Les Paul through a Marshall, and then you play that uh, an, an old, old one. one. You know, you you may or may not notice the difference. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, there's very often I'll be in the studio and I will actually I'll pick up a pick up a new one because uh, it's for for that song it works better. You know, it's it's a matter of taste. But the what are you going to grab today after this? Now that you're inspired to go downstairs, probably go down and get uh, you know that uh, clear clear guitar that's on. Uh, 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 done with mirrors. Yeah, I mean it's a clear, it's a clear guitar, and uh, it's a Dan Armstrong. That's what I'm going to play. All there right. you go, sweet. And, uh, Joe, you can do it, man. Has your mood been lifted? <laughs> he really, yeah, he's just. Joe, has your mood been lifted at all? Is this? 
My what? Has your mood been lifted at all? Has oh, this yeah. pepped you up a little bit? It's great. Yeah. We, we kind of, we were a little timid, man. This, this is like the biggest, you're the biggest guest we've had, so I well, didn't want right, to interrupt so or anything we'll, like we'll that. Do but... that to, we'll do this again tomorrow, right? <laughs> okay, well, you know, we'll, we'll talk you right through it. Right, we'll, that'll we'll, be great. We'll talk you right through the album. So now, so what do you drink now? You drink like a, a, a keg of coffee, and you stay up till like four in the morning? Yeah. Just well, walk. lately I've been, you know, I've been watching the, the, uh, the, all the politics, you know, kind of really, you know, but once they start repeating themselves on, on TV, then I go to the internet billion. I go on the internet and start, you know, digging in there and, uh, I, oh my God! Are you are you into conspiracy theory? Please tell uh, me you are. Of course. You are. Oh, have you have you watched all those uh, you know. zeitgeist and all that type of thing? Uh, forget it. It's it's unbelievable. <laughs> now let me <laughs> ask you this. Oh, this is the best. Uh, do you believe in that stuff? Because I'm all over it. I am uh, definitely. I mean, we we just uh, I don't know. I mean, who who, like, who've, who have you tracked it down to? Who do you think runs the world? Oh uh, God, there's there's a couple of different uh, levels. I think of. Uh, of the guys in the, the in the dark room, you know, like in the X Files, where they had the, the the guys that uh, made the deal with the aliens, and yeah, kind of that, that thing. And, uh, the shape So there are different. I think there are different groups of them around the world, and that have different. You know, basically, uh, I mean, they have different interests, but but it's basically the same. It's, you know, you, you know, what I think keep, it is keeping themselves rich and keeping themselves powerful. I think yes. it goes down to the uh, the Rothschilds. That's where I traced it back to. Yeah. At first, I thought it was J.P. Morgan, but then I realized he was just an agent for them. Yeah, well, <laughs> no, he's just no. There's another, there's another layer. It's uh, there's one that goes back. I don't know if it's Rothschild or uh, I think it might be actually that goes back. You know, hundreds and hundreds of years. You know, uh, way back, uh, they can trace it back to the the Templars and the and all that. It's uh, you know, what you I know. love about this is you're totally valid. Everybody says that I'm out of my mind. And I can now say, well, you know what? I had a conversation with <laughs> Joe Perry. <laughs> Joe Perry thinks it, too. He thinks it, too. <clears throat> oh, we, the, uh, my, big, uh, my, my wife and I, Billy and I, have been, I mean, we've been, uh, we buy all those, uh, uh, Jesus, 20 years ago, we, were, we went through all those uh, 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 UFO tapes you could buy. You know, over in Cambridge, there was a... Uh, um, a shop like right around the corner from the. Uh, so this is like pre YouTube. You had to actually go down and get the VHS tapes. Yeah, it was right right around the corner from uh, House of Blues. There was a little kind of new wavy, new new agey kind of place. And right. They had a they had a shelf full of these like homemade uh, UFO tapes. You know the Brazil ones and uh, ones from Mexico. Oh, so you're you're into aliens? You believe in aliens? Every, well, all of it. You know everything. I mean, we, we, well, I'll tell you, we're, we're we're still waiting to see one. But uh, you know, I've talked to people that that swear that they've seen them, and uh, you know, I, I believe. Uh, you I know, love it. I'm still waiting to see something come crawling out of the woods. You know, <laughs> he's into it deeper than I am because I draw the line at aliens. Like, I don't know if there's some out there, but like, I, you know, I don't get into the flying saucers. I'm just more into evil bankers. Well, we have three levels here because I'm I'm way more conservative about this stuff than you are, and you're a little more conservative than Joe Perry is. Joe, so Joe have, takes it all the way to the guy in the I moon. like that. Joe, if you're going to go, go all the fucking way with it, man. Yeah, you know? yeah why don't you write, write a song about that? Write a song about uh, the Illuminati. Well, gotta be, no one's, has anybody ever done that? There's a concept album. Yeah. Uh, you know what? That's great, Joe. You, you've been successful for 40 years. Why don't you take an advice from me? <laughs> how, how to run your career right off the rails. Yeah, that's a great idea. Do a rock opera. <laughs> Illuminati. Now, now you're talking. Yeah. I'd like to hear that. I'd like to hear Steven do a, a couple of yeah. you know, yeah. a, an Illuminati song. <laughs> I'm reading a book right now about this, about right, just what we're talking about, about the uh, uh, the uh, the economic... Uh, oh, Confessions uh, but, of an Economic Hitman. Uh, yeah. John Perkins. Yeah. Yeah, I read that. And that's, uh, that's, that's amazing, you know, it's... Uh, you know, it's it's there. They're out there. You know. So. You know what? I it, it does. It contributes to your mood, though, Joe. I'm telling you, if you read too much of it, you're going to get depressed, <laughs> and it just it gets too overwhelming. So, we 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 got to leave you on a high note. Why the hell? I would, think, why, why would I end on conspiracy theory? I don't think it affects your mood because I don't really buy into any of it, and I'm still a depressed, miserable. It's it's something's going to get to you. You know uh, what I you mean? You know what it is? It's it's like you know you got to you got to make the best of what you can. You know of what you can. You know really touch the uh kind of uh shout at you know what i mean what whatever is in your in your range of your world and you kind of make the make the best of it you know what you got to do make I, the most of you it got, you got to get a puppy 
Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and and real quick too, before he go, let's plug your uh, the kids band, man. How's the how how are you? Tab. Tab. How are your kids doing with their band? They're doing they're doing good. They're uh, they're keeping their day jobs, which is really important. Uh, right. Uh, but you know, I told them basically if they you know as long as they did that, I'd help them out as much as I could. And uh, you know, they get they get to use. Uh, uh, this amp or that amp, or uh, and they, they're working hard. You know, they they they, they work during the week and and uh, go. You know, Tony's going to school and uh, uh, Adrian's working in New York, and then they get together and and uh, um, and they uh, they t- they gig. They got. I guess they get a uh, uh, a small a, a short gig with uh, with Wyland. They, they yeah, we saw we saw them live in New York. They were great. So anybody listening. Uh... Definitely go out and check out Tab. Playing with Wyland, that's fucking awesome. Yeah, man. yeah, Jesus. yeah. They're, they're moving up. Well, they, we... they hooked up when they were they did with uh, they they played with STP uh, uh, a while ago, and wow. and they're and the guys in STP are old friends of ours, and uh, so so I guess Wyland uh, wanted to uh, give him a give him a helping hand, and uh, it's going to be good. That's awesome, man. Right. We'll send those kids our best. They're they're good dudes. I hang with them whenever they're in New York playing. And uh, and of course, Aaron is a great kid, and and, uh, and Jesus, did, Joe, you sound like an old man. Well, yeah, say hello to the kids. You're I, their age. It's so funny. As we're talking to him, I'm sitting here like this is pretty cool. We're talking to Joe Perry, and then I forget like I'm friends with his kids. Like you know, <laughs> it's two. It's it's like two different things. So it's 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 uh you know, thank you for calling in, man. Well, sure, it was yeah, a man. lot of fun. I was look, I was I, I actually looking forward to this one. Well, listen, you, got, you guys, you guys, sweet keep... man. Thank you for that. We appreciate that. Yeah, and like I said, I saw you, man. You guys, I saw you. It's been twenty years since I seen you guys. Keep getting better. So, uh, you know, just stop reading about the conspiracy theory. You know, like I yeah. said, have the, <laughs> the cup of coffee. <laughs> I'll let you know. I'll let you know if I see anything. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. All right, Joe. Thanks a lot, man. All right, guys. We'll see you. All right. See take you, it buddy. easy. Bye. Bye. All right. Uh, obviously, now we we got to take a break here. Uh, that was Joe Perry from Aerosmith. I probably should have said that at some point during the. Uh, why didn't I think to say that during the radio thing? You were talking to Joe Perry from Aerosmith. Be like the... Because uh, we're, 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 we're idiots, yeah, right? All right. Well, you're listening saying. to Uninformed. Keep it here for the final hour. Uninformed with Bill Burr and Joe DeRosa. ACDC Radio. The only channel playing nonstop ACDC music. Wow! Radio. Hear songs from their new CD, Black Ice, their first in eight years. Out now. Welcome to the sounds of thunder. I'm Angus Young from ACDC. From Down Under. This is Brian Johnson, and let's keep it rocking on ACDC Radio. XM Channel 53. Hi, this is Kristen, Kelsey, and Cassidy. And, and we're Shadaisy. Being on tour is great, but after 23 days on the road, we cannot wait to get home to family and friends. And to our own sleep number beds. My sleep number is 50. I'm a 40. And I'm a 25. The tougher your days, the more you deserve a sleep number night. A sleep number bed lets you personalize your comfort at the touch of a button. Inner spring and foam beds don't. A higher sleep number setting for more firmness, a lower number for softer support. And since every day is different, you'll always find your perfect sleep number setting anytime. Because the most comfortable sleep is the one you control yourself. Experience the difference a sleep number bed makes every night. Call 1-800-372-6100 for your free information kit with brochure, DVD, and price list. That's 1-800-372-6100. Sleep number by Select Comfort. It's the bed that counts. How are you protecting yourself financially from the subprime crisis or from record oil prices? What are you doing about falling home values or a plummeting dollar? Now more than ever, this is the time to diversify your assets by investing in gold. Just call Goldline for a free information packet at 800-711-9083. Since 2001, gold prices have tripled, and many experts still predict record highs. With as little as $1,000, you can acquire physical gold shipped right to you. 
Call Gold Line now, and they'll send you a free information packet and CD that shows you step-by-step how you can acquire gold. Call 800-711-9083. The call and the information are free, and there's no obligation. In today's economy, diversify your investments with the power of gold. Call Gold Line right now for your free information. Call 800-711-9083. That's 800-711-9083. Business owners, a Mara merchant can provide your business up to $200,000 in working capital in seven days or less without the hassle of a bank. And unlike a bank, we have a 90% approval rate. Turn your future credit sales from your customers into fast cash. You can use the money for anything you choose, such as expansion, marketing, purchasing inventory, paying off debt, buying out investors or partners, acquiring other business. Call 877-469-6520. A Mara merchant offers you a no-hassle application with simple, easy steps. We offer multiple cash advance programs that can get your business up to $200,000 right away. With approvals as fast as 24 hours, pay back with your future credit card transactions from your customers. If you have $5,000 per month in credit card sales from your customers, you may qualify. Call Amera Merchant now to find out how much you may qualify for today. Call 877-469-6520. That's 877-469-6520. That's 1-877-469-6520. The best action, players, coaches, and fans that sports has to offer. He fumbled the football. XM's lineup delivers the most sports and play-by-play -play coverage to listeners and fans across the country. The rebound, open net, Nolan scores. Tune in to XM Sports Nation Channel 144 or log on to XMRadio.com for game times and listen. He's got the two-hand cam. XM Sports, brought to you by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get DirecTV. Place your regularly scheduled program to bring you this goddamn special ass episode of Uninformed. Uninformed. Welcome to the Uninformed Mixtape, sluts. I'm your host, Bernard Valentine, from the world's nastiest sex rap group, Deep. The Uninformed Mixtape. Uninformed. Tonight we're gonna bless that ass with some of Bill and Joe's greatest goddamn hits. And in addition to that bullshit, we're going to shove some brand new exclusive cuts right up your pee hole. Also tonight, a brand new discussion with a real live 5-0. That's right, we're going to pick the motherfucking brain of a motherfucking ex-cop. Fuck you. Uninformed. The Uninformed Mixtape, tonight, right now. This episode has been pre-recorded, so that means don't try calling in, you stupid asshole. If you got some shit to say, email it to uninformedradio at gmail.com. Otherwise, shut the fuck up. Hey, yo, enough fucking around. Let's start this shit. Here's a brand new, hot off the press discussion between Bill and Joe. On and four. I could not sleep last night, man. I knew we had to get up today. I know, dude. You to, look like shit. To do this, because, you know, because, you know, you know, we're out every night doing shows. Too late. So to get up at 10 a.m. We're out there on the circuit. <laughs> to get up at 10 a.m. to be in here by 12 to do like this pre-recorded episode. I was like, all right, I, I'm going to go right home after my spots and, you know, and go right to bed at like 3 a.m. and try to get six or seven hours of sleep. I'm trying to be responsible. Yeah. And I just I didn't drink. I just went right home. And, dude, I just lay. I was just laying in my bed till 7 a.m. I could not sleep. I tried reading for a while. I didn't fall asleep. I'm oh, reading that's the worst, and I'm reading Wicked, which <laughs> what is that? That like, sounds that, like something a, a, a divorced woman would read on a I beach know, that's exactly in the middle of summer. It it's that book they based that musical on the, about the witches of Oz, where you know the posters. It's like it's like Wicked, a new musical about the witches of Oz. Can I tell you something? I don't know what one of those fucking musicals about <laughs> Chicago. Oklahoma, any of them. It's just a bunch of people in uh, bunch this, of uh, people in frilly dresses over yeah, there, yeah, just singing songs. Of, uh, fruits over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, uh, they, uh, and the the slogan on the poster it shows the you know it shows the two witches from the Wizard of Oz, and then it, and then the slogan is 
a whole lot happened before Dorothy dropped in. You know, it's, it's real sassy. Oh, my God. So I'm reading that book right now. So Why I just, do you have that book, first of all? My roommate had it. She had it, and I was like, I'm going to read she this. She had it? Or yeah, he had she, it? she, she, oh, okay. she. So I wanted to read it. So I was laying there reading that, sober, and just feeling like just like such a fucking like fruity douche. Just curled up <laughs> in my bed trying to fall asleep. So then Are I, you wearing pajamas? Yeah. In a sports yeah. bra? <laughs> <laughs> I was wearing sweats rolled up at the waist. Those stupid slippers with like an animal. I tell you, when you, you hook up with a girl and she has like that that still sh- like stuffed animals and crap on her bed, I've always found that just to, it's Some, it's just weird. Pedof- pedophile is in the air when that shit happens. It's weird. Like I kind of hate it, but I kind of think it's cute and like comforting a little bit. Like I feel good. Like I'm like, all right, this chick's at least not a skank. You know, she's not like the chick. That's guy. all a girl needs. Yeah, that's to it. To convince you that she never let anybody go raw in her, his little stuffed bunny. That's it. That's it. <laughs> the, uh, you know. I right. usually look at the bookshelf. I look at some of the books that they had. Sometimes I get creeped out, though, if they have, if the books are too, like, sort of intellectual or whatever. You know what I mean? It freaks me out a little bit. Not oh, that... no, Joe. That means she wants it in the ass. <laughs> that's what I mean. I feel She's like got that's too somebody... much power at work. Just push her face right near the pillow. <laughs> so, uh. I, I hooked up with a girl one time, and I was looking up, and she had one book up there. I swear to God, the name of the book was uh, "They Said It Wasn't Rape," <laughs> 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 and I was literally waiting for the first time I touched this girl for her to just be curled up in a ball, like with a purple crayon, just drawing on the sheet or something. You know, I was just like, <laughs> no, it made me like nervous, like thinking like, what happened to this girl? And I don't want to have some sort of rape Vietnam flashback. Jesus Christ. And I go to put my hand up her shirt there. <laughs> Did you ask her what the book was about? No. I, you know what? I waited to the second or third time, and um, yeah, she was just more like into like – she went through a woman's movement kind of uh, phase. So then, of course, I trashed her. Dude, I I hooked up with this girl the other night, and um, – Was she hot? She Yeah, she was pretty hot, but she had like a – I was taking her shirt up, and she had, like, a stretch mark on her stomach, and she was like, I'm kind of embarrassed. She was in her 30s, and she goes, I had a baby when I was 17, so I have some stretch marks. And I was, I just let it go. I didn't ask any questions. I was so afraid to ask, well, what happened? Like, is the, did you get it? Yeah, what do you, do you, what, do you not get stretch marks when you're in your 30s and you have a baby? Well, no, I'm saying, she was, she was just like, I had a baby when I was 17, and that was all she said, and I was so afraid to ask her, well, do you still have it? Or like, I was afraid she was going to be like, I gave him up for adoption. Not a day goes by. Oh. <laughs> you know, I tried to hide the pregnancy. <laughs> I had the baby in the toilet. Do you remember that story in the post? That was me. Yeah, dude. That I was, was so... me. <laughs> <laughs> I was so fucking scared, dude. That's what it's all about for me anymore, though, is bringing out the depression in a woman when I when I oh, when I try to fuck weak? her that's when try, yeah when you try to take him down I have a new joke in my act where I say after I fuck a girl I want her to get up from my bed and walk directly to the window and jump out of it <laughs> Jesus Christ Joe <laughs> I want to just bring out all the pain I want it to be very therapeutic I go I just try to uh I try to what I do is I I try to uh get them get them to talk about sex I go really hacky I try to draw out the whore within like their inner whore you know what I mean you ever yeah. try that? You ever try that? You basically, the, it's the old thing. You kind of admit, you know, when you start talking about sexual fantasies, you just admit to something that you want to do that is just so far down the road that anything that she was actually thinking of admitting will pale in comparison. And then she'll admit like her hoary shit. Yeah, because... that that this is this is all in theory. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. It's kind of like shooting a pilot, Joe. You know, it's... you don't know if it's going to get picked up or not, but you know, <laughs> everybody's got a good feeling about the script. It's hard to. Uh... It's hard to get into the uh, sexual discussion sometimes. You know, sometimes the jump is too is too drastic from what you're actually talking about. You're trying to work it in, and she oh, keeps talking about you recipes force it, and that's shit. Bad. Yeah, <laughs> you're trying to you're trying to ease your way into some kind of ass sex discussion, and it's fucking impossible half the time. <laughs> I, you know, what's I, funny is I have no idea how I do it. I was just trying to think. Maybe because I've been in a well, fucking some, relationship too long. I can't sometimes remember. you pull it off and the transition is seamless. And all of a sudden she's sitting there being like, yeah, you know, one time I let a guy come up my ass and then I shit it out into his mouth. And you're like, how the fuck, how the fuck did I get her to pull I this know. out? I know. And you were just talking about <laughs> politics like a sec. I remember I, I hooked up with this girl one time and uh, 
she'd come to my show or whatever. And for some stupid reason, I was so horny or whatever, I literally tried to make my move between the first and second show. Like we're at the club and I like, <laughs> grabbed her ass or something in the yeah. green room. Yeah, and she just you. looked at me like, what is wrong with you? And then my whole second set, I was just thinking, ah, man, I blew it or whatever. <laughs> but for some reason, she still wanted to go out and have a drink with me. So we ended up going out to this bar and we're having a drink. And this girl is, like, giving me the uh, not until I see a ring vibe, you know? Oh, coats God. on and all. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Well, I think this is our guest here. Lewis. All right. Yeah, hey, uh, Danny's going to let you in, okay? All right. All right, bye. All right, so that was sort of unprofessional. So we could um, just... Yeah. No, we're not editing that out. We're gonna show this is <laughs> this not, is no, this is this is how it fucking works yeah. around here. This right? is a pre recorded show if you consider it fucking it Danny intro. didn't show up until two minutes before. <laughs> there was no no sense of urgency. But let's but let's let's get back to the prude though. That's but just to make the point, that's how much respect we have for the audience that even in the pre recorded state, go fuck yourself. We're not cutting out <laughs> answering the phone. The what middle. are we gonna do? Piss off three listeners? I mean honestly, Jeff. Look at I'm shutting off my cell phone here. So go so 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 anyway the, so yeah. she she's giving me the whole little house in the prairie vibe right and uh, she, you know coats on and that kind of thing and dude I don't know Terrible. what happened I don't know what happened all all of a sudden we're just talking and you know it was really loud we're kind of like this dance club or whatever we're up at the bar and uh, and all of a sudden I just she sort of like talking like blah 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 hosted a sex party blah blah blah, blah and I just went like what and all of a sudden she just starts fucking talking about sex because. I wouldn't even bring it up at that point because I fucked up so bad at the club. And she starts telling me how she used to host sex parties. I'm like, what What, the, what are you talking about, like an orgy? She's like, yeah. Jesus Christ. And I was like, but what, what do you, where did you have? She was part of like a group. She goes, sometimes I would have them at my house. And then other times we would just rent a whole floor at a hotel. And people would just go from room to room to room. And I'm like, and you hosted this? And she's like, yeah. And I go, did you participate? She goes, yeah, you know, kind of. And it was the f most fucked up thing. I literally went from thinking like, "There's no way I'm getting laid," to "I'm definitely getting laid." To I don't, I, I don't want to touch this girl because I'm gonna get <laughs> fucking AIDS or something. <laughs> and somehow she still ended up. I still, she still ended up coming back to my uh, my hotel room. And uh, did you bang her? No, we messed around a little bit, and uh, I didn't have a condom or anything. And there was no way I was going near it. And then she would just she said, "Say, have you ever heard of mutual masturbation?" And I was like, "Yeah, I can do that." That's a great feeling sometimes. <laughs> just sort of rubbed one out when yeah. you get the nut. When it's the chick where you're like, "If I fuck this girl, I'm immediately." Oh yeah, I'm at a clinic. Yeah, and, and I'm gonna regret it. Oh, who's and kidding? Who? Then... No, the reality is, I'll be thinking I need to go to a clinic for the next eight years until I finally meet a r woman responsible enough <laughs> to tell me that I need to go. <laughs> Oh, that's brutal, that's, dude. That's the girl I'm going to be thinking of. Oh, that's brutal. I just did the uh, the clinic run. I know. You just went down there. Yeah. How does it feel, Joe? It feels came... great. I keep saying it's like the feeling you have after you go to confession. You're just like, well, well that skanky shit is gone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like... who, who was the one you were worried about with with your, oh, uh, your Jesus, HIV test? Jesus, dude. I had a couple doozies on that. Now, I always wear a condom. Always. Yeah, for those people uh, listening... Joe DeRosa is like he's you're like the kid from like the high school film strip. Yeah. As far as Danny, do you realize Joe DeRosa you told me you've never gone never. raw. Never. Ever. Ever. Never ever in my life have I ever raw dogged a girl. Ever. And how old are you? Twenty nine. Why but why not? Because I'm terrified to catch something. I'm horrified. Danny, I have meltdowns. I, you know, I fuck girls with like hefty bag condoms on. <laughs> You know, this and I'm like and in then, a plutonium he, suit, and I'm still worried that I caught something. You know, I'm just like, I, it scares the shit out of me. And I'm he terrified. was sweating. He was actually sweating, like like going down there, getting like he's like, oh man, who? In my Thank defense, God. Thank God. I, in your defense, what? In my defense, I have fucked some brutal <laughs> skanks on the road. Oh. I, I'm not afraid. To girls, do girls with those vaginas that have the ability to eat through the hefty bag. I told you, man. <laughs> I fucked a hefty bag like, condom. Like alien blood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Danny, I fucked a girl in... Uh, he fucks the Gordon Weaver. <laughs> I fucked a girl in Florida, which right there, the yeah. word Florida and I fucked a girl, that they should never go together. Florida and Jersey are the two states we should never sleep with anybody. Oh, dude, you got to get some stats and, up, uh, Danny. I, I want to see, like, a high-risk state. Dude, Danny, I fucked a girl in Florida... 
uh, she was smoking hot. She looked like Brandy, the singer, right? Uh-huh. And uh, we're in my hotel room, and I'm naked on the bed, and she t- well, she takes my pants off, uh-huh. and she's looking at my dick, and she's giving me a hand job, and her phone rings, her cell phone rings. She literally answers the phone. She goes, yeah, girl, uh-huh. You know what I'm doing right now? I'm staring at a dick. <laughs> and she goes, and she goes, that's right, girl. I got to go because I'm a suck it. And she, <laughs> and she got the phone and blew me. And then I fucked her and I was like, oh, I'm finished. Whatever she's got, it burns through latex. <laughs> Dude, you know what? That, that sounds like dialogue for one of those bad black exploitation movies that, that yeah, end just, up getting protested. That, yeah. that was actually. I was waiting for her to somersault. You know, and then jump up with a handgun, you know, yeah. like Foxy Brown. It was fucking, dude, it was it was terrifying. Not terrifying enough for I me fu- to not I fuck this her. Girl, I fucked this girl one time who was, uh, she was such a skank and so came across like uh, she wasn't even like an honest person. I forget what she said, but she had some sort of criminal past. So I'm always really bad about getting them out of my hotel room. So I was literally sleeping next to her, right? And my wallet and my watch were on the uh, the little fucking nightstand on her side of the bed. And literally the whole night I was sleeping in like seven-minute intervals. And I'd be sleeping and then like the paranoia while I'm in my sleep that she's going to steal my oh, shit. Yeah. I would literally pop up and then look at her and make sure my wallet and my watch, that's right, was across on the dresser. Uh, that was brutal. That sucks, dude. That sucks. <laughs> oh, my God. I ever – that was another girl. I had one in Florida that used to be a stripper, and she was just skinny, which was freaked oh, me yeah. out. She was skinny. Too old to be that skinny. Yeah. She didn't and have a she movie was... premiere coming out. There was no reason. <laughs> she was doing blow the entire time. Like, she just kept stopping whatever we're doing to do lines. And then she'd be like, and she literally goes, she goes, I'm sorry my vagina's so dry. I've just done so much blow tonight. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, Joe! I gotta tell you something, man. My my dick would have tapped out just like in the UFC right there. It just would have been like, all right, I'm out. Dude, a hard dick has no conscience, dude. It you know it was ready. Dude, to, well, I go, to go dry vagina and coke boogers. That's enough for me, man. Being yeah. Florida. <laughs> ah, she was hot though. She was a stripper. I was I was on you know I, I mean oh that was you needed the stripper story. That was yeah exactly. I needed the I but I said. Up. I got I got the test. I was in the clear. I, everything was negative, and I also it had been like I had survived like the window. I hadn't fucked any girls in the you know when they're like, well, if it's been three months, conceivably, like I had gone celibate for three months, and then I got the test, and I was celibate clean. from what show? Not banging girls with condoms every single time. No, 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 no. I'm saying I didn't fuck any girls in three months, and then I got the test. It was all negative, and I was like. I was like, that's it. No Joe, more if fucking. If they took an x ray of your internal organs, I bet there's a rainbow. Just <laughs> <laughs> right over with like butterflies, like a Mariah Carey video. I guess so, man. I, you know, I don't know. You know, sure, sure. Um, I, uh, you know what I'm you like, Joe? I'm... You're like one of those guys in the army, like acting like you saw some action and you were actually in the back, like peeling potatoes. You're like, yeah. Just like that guy who called that one time. I saw a lot of crazy shit out there, man. Well, that's my problem. Is like I'm a real, I'm a real like pervert. Like I love like filthy, filthy sex, but I'm also too careful. So I would be, you know, I'd be like the marine with the knife in his teeth, like you you'd know, be the guy who wore know. the helmet and they actually has the chin tr- chin strap on. <laughs> yeah, I'd be on the battlefield, like. Let's go kick some enemy ass. But hold on. Let's make sure everything's in order for, you know, let's do this. Let's think before we move here, people. But let's really, you know, like, it, it's a contradiction, dude. It's It sucks. Sounds good. No, it's but you, you you have to more worry about, because obviously you, st- you still go down on girls, oral sex and all that type of thing. I, don't, I won't go down on a lot of girls. I got to kind of know a girl a little before I go down on her. And which, that's which pretty what, safe. Yeah. She has a stuffed animal, and you're like, okay, uh, yeah. I'm if going she's in. Got a, if she's got a, you know, a Bert and Ernie <laughs> on her bed, then that means she's clean to me. It's I awesome. literally go by the gauge of, well, she looks clean, like it, <laughs> which is the worst. Oh, absolutely. But I totally go by that. You know, I totally go by that. And as you can see, it works, Joe. Mm-hmm. You're clean. Yeah, well, you know, what are you going to do? I was there watching... you go, ladies. Joe DeRosa. That was one of the things I did last clean night. Clean as a whistle. Was when I was trying to get to sleep. I was saying I couldn't get to sleep last night, and I watched, I watched this porno. Do you blow more money on cabs or on condoms? 
over the course of a year. You live well, all the way uptown. Well, you can get them for free at the clinic. They're free. I mean, do you spend money on At the clinic? I don't even know where the clinic is. <laughs> well, uh, I do, Bill. And uh, Is it like a little <laughs> mobile home with the <laughs> improvised wooden steps that you walk into? Yeah, it's into? like the bookmobile. <laughs> they, they, just, <laughs> they just come through town and make sure everybody's clean. I, uh, I don't even know. I they don't know. I, I, Condoms to me. You, go you to, get them you in go the street. To, I live in Harlem. Reed. I live in Harlem, so they give out... There's always like one of those tables in the street where they give you a bag of like a dozen condoms for free, and a little pamphlet on sickle cell. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the uh, yeah, they'll give you like a bag of condoms for free and lube. Oh my god, you're getting the fucking CIA condoms, the conspiracy condoms, conspiracy condoms that, the... that that they give to minorities to uh, yeah. that don't work. That's why they keep having all those kids. There's a government official down in the sewer grate next oh, to yeah. the table poking holes through the uh, yeah exactly the condoms before he hands. Did them you to see them. that white guy in the raincoat with like the sunglasses? <laughs> I um. Dude, I watched this. I got to tell you this, dude. I watched this movie last night. I couldn't, I could not sleep. And I watched this movie called Seduced. These were the three movies I watched last night. One was. As you stayed up until yeah. seven in the morning. Yeah, I couldn't sleep. So one, the first movie I was watching was called Seduced by Evil. And it was a Suzanne Starring. Summers movie. Suzanne Summers from. Oh, how can you go Chrissy wrong? Chrissy from Pl Three's Company. Well, you hear the title and you think, oh, this is going to be softcore porn. She's going to show her tits. This is gonna yeah, be awesome. she uses the thigh master. Yeah, and it's not. It was a fucking Lifetime movie that they were rerunning on HBO. And what was it called? Seduced by Evil. Oh, God. It what, was, what did the guy do? It's She goes to, like, a shaman who puts a spell on her. And I don't know, dude. I couldn't follow it. It was, you know, it was 4 o'clock in the morning. I was seeing... You know, double and you're just from sitting delirium. there with your dick in your hand, waiting for something to jerk off. Uh, to no, I'd already masturbated twice before I turned the movie on, but I just wanted to see if to I could what? see Wicked Suzanne. <laughs> no, actually, I ran into that guy Yoshi uh, that works for Evil Angel, and he gave me a copy of uh, Butthole Whores. It was called, which uh, I wasn't able to put together what the movie was about specifically. Uh, it was Our a little highbrow. Serpico just showed up. <laughs> yeah, we were talking to a retired police officer in a little bit. But dude, here's the thing: I was watching this movie, and I, I all I could think about the whole thing. This movie was made in 1994. It was the worst fucking thing. It was like they made a, you know, it was like a Danielle Steele novel turned into a movie gone wrong. It was, it was horrible. And I'm watching it. And I remember watching the E True Hollywood story about Three's Company, and how. Jesus, she, Joe. Do you watch anything of quality? She left the show. Three's Company I was watching the solid. Ario Speedwagon behind the music. Three's and Company, I just noticed bite that. your tongue. Bite your tongue. Three's Company was a great fucking... Oh. Come on, man. Well, you're a little older than I. You know, I was five when I watched Three's Company. How old were you, <laughs> How old were you when you watched Three's Company? I'm only 10 years you're old. You're probably a solid 26, 27. No, Three's Company, I was like 12. No. Well, I, you didn't like Three's Company? I mean, then... Well, either way, it doesn't matter. I like the sweat hogs and, and that shit back then, but now when I watch Horshack, he doesn't make me laugh anymore. Mr. Cartier. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, somehow it just doesn't have oh, wait, the same that's, effect. That's not Horshack. Anyway, who okay. cares? The, uh, the point is, I remember watching the E. True Hollywood story about Suzanne Summer, and she left that show because she was immensely popular on the show, and she was like... Her people, her agents, whatever, they felt that she was the reason that that show was so successful. Uh -huh. And she demanded, like, you know, she pulled the Brad Garrett thing when she was like, I want this much per episode or I'm fucking leaving. And they were like, hey, fucking leave then. We'll replace you with another hot blonde. We don't give a shit. And that's when right. Terry came in. And I'm like, and the Jesus show sucked Christ. after that. Yeah. And I was like, this chick was, I mean, she was there. She was like at that you know, position where it was like, I'm I'm here, I'm in, I made it, I, I that's it, a car blind. And then that's that, that was it, dude. What did she yeah. do after that? It that's was that, like that chick, uh, Rhoda. I, Didn't she do the same shit? Valerie, Valerie Harper? Harper. Yeah, she left the Hogan family. Oh, yeah. It was called the Valerie, Valerie Harper show, whatever. And she left and they went, hey, go fuck yourself. We'll change you to the Hogan family. Yeah, and they just wrote it in <laughs> that, she and, that she died. She died. Uh, and then everybody felt sorry like for the family, like it was a real family. Like she really see, died, I can, I can and they kept watching it. But I can see the uh, like someone like uh, Suzanne Summers doing that because she was still hot. But you don't wait till you're fifty, especially but I mean, as a female. I mean, that's how it is. You know, you gotta a, be, you gotta be fuckable. Dude, we got, we got to get back to these stats here, Joe. Just to let you know, when you're on the road, if anybody's planning a road trip, we got to let you know which states you 
definitely want to bag it in. <laughs> oh, we, we got it? Yeah, yeah I, I downloaded oh. some uh, government report, which gives you the rate of all the different STDs per 100,000. Okay. So, Florida... Wait, wait, Joe, you want to take real, a guess? You want to take a guess? Real quick, though, how far before we, how far into this government report are we going to get before Billy starts conspiracizing <laughs> on, on uh, how it's a, a mind wash and how they're trying to fuck us out of something? Well, <laughs> these, this, is, this is their blueprint. This is from, they want to attack, Joe. Oh, five. Right. So, so it, Florida... It, it, what am I guessing here? The percentage per, of people that have AIDS in Florida? No, the, no. Number, the number of positive cases of gonorrhea per 100,000. What's the number one state you don't want to bang in, Joe? What, what are you going to go with? I'm going with Florida. You're going with Florida? I'm going with Georgia. Well, you're looking at the fucking map, Bill. <laughs> I can't see it from here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're all going to be fucked because we have to actually name these states because the name isn't on over the state. Oh, so, Jesus Jesus, Christ. Christ. Danny, no, if we're you, not fucked. I know what the states if are. If you point to one I over don't. here, I'm not going to know. <laughs> you don't know what they are? I have oh no my clue. God, I don't know. He's a fucking moron. <laughs> no, he's not. I don't know what they are either. I couldn't tell you what half of those states were. You don't know what the states are, Joe. You you go on uh, you go on the road. You don't look at a map. Where no, I'm going. I don't. You fucking nerd. <laughs> Dude, that, you know something? I know where you're going with this, but that's not nerdy. To, to... <laughs> so wait a second. I'm a moron, but you guys are having a spelling bee later. <laughs> <laughs> I know. No, I can see not knowing how to spell, but like, no, actually, you know what? You're right because I use words all the time that I don't even know how to fucking spell to try to impress people. So all right, so you guys are right. Wait, I'm, just so, not, I'm just not a moron in this. So I'm betting Florida. I know, and I can pick out Florida on a map without it being labeled. So Jesus, Joe. That. Wow. <laughs> you can pick that one I'm out? How about New that. York? Can you pick that one out, too? I'm proud of that. New York, maybe. The, uh, Louie. I don't think you well, can hear yeah, it. Let there. him know we're going to be, because he's looking really depressed out there. Let him know we're going we're gonna to get him in yeah, here. Yeah, I told him. Okay, told him. all right. So, No, Florida is not the, uh, the most infected State with gonorrhea. How do you know, Danny? You don't even know what the fuck. Well, because I know are. Florida's right there. Whatever that state is, can, is. Can I? Do, uh, I just saw where you pointed. <laughs> what is it? It's towards the east. No, no, it isn't. It Show, isn't. Point to that. I want to see if you know what if you, if you know what state that is. Go ahead. Point to. Danny doesn't know. Go ahead. Point to the state. What state is that, that? one? What is it? <laughs> that one is. Uh, he has a college degree. Uh, <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> that one is. Uh, it's that, already, that's already, Alabama. No, it's Mississippi, you fucking Mississippi idiot. is the highest? Forget that it's the Alabama's highest. Alabama's right next to it. Don't act like that's that way off. Alabama's right next to Mississippi. Wow. Alabama touches wow. Florida. Wow. Dude, that is some Bobby Kelly shit. You just pointed. <laughs> did you just not point to the second state from the right? Oh, oh, that, that one. one. Which one he pointed? Oh, the Fuck third. You. The third You're one. You're not over. getting out That's of that. His... <laughs> You're not getting out of it. You're full of shit. Because not only that, you, if you thought he was just pointing Alabama, you would have gone to Alabama. But you were like, ah, that one is ah. Wow. I remember a long time ago, Bobby Kelly, uh, his Booker called him up, and said, uh, "Yeah, I got you a college in Wisconsin." He goes, "Awesome. What state is that in?" <laughs> I can just hear him. Dude, what state is that in? Dude, you're, you're, you're right there with him, though. Oh, gosh. That's hilarious. Mississippi. Mississippi. Now, who would have thought Mississippi? Dude, first of all, who would go to Mississippi? So I'm feeling really good about my chances of not getting gonorrhea yeah. at any point in my lifetime. That's absolutely true. The uh, uh, I got so called to on another dumb thing the other night. I was talking to Russ Beneve. About what? And two of his friends. I don't Russ even Beneve, remember. Russ another uh, comedian. Yeah. Got a whole chunk on rape. Yeah. Hilarious comedian. <laughs> His crowd work, I was I was laughing the other night because he does a joke about suicide. Uh -huh. And he goes, so is anybody else suicidal like me? And that's, that's like crowd work in Russia's head. <laughs> yeah. But I go, uh, suicidal? Come on, people. Yeah. Back me up. He cracked on me about something. I go, I go, really? I go, why? Because I'm not a disturbed sycophant like you. And he goes, do you even know what sycophant means? And I was like. Uh, no, I actually don't. He just called me on in front of a whole group of people, and we just started laughing. He's going, how fucking embarrassing that you just got called on it, you fucking idiot, you know? Well, you're thinking, oh, I got sick in there. Yeah. I got, I got fans. Fan. Exactly. Sick of fan. It sounds like psychopathic. Dude, we've been shooting this shit here for almost a half an hour. I think we got to take a break here. Uh, and that's it. Next up, we're going to hit you with the greatest hit, bitch. 
Here comes the first motherfucking discussion from the very first motherfucking episode. Ah, shit. It seems like just yesterday these two motherfuckers started doing this motherfucking program. Well, fuck it. Here it is. The Navy discussion. On and four. I did a show the other night uh, at a club in New York, and I was talking in my set. I, t- I told a joke about a story, actually, about when I had gotten into a fight with some guys in the Navy. Uh-huh. And I said three times to the story, I go, I support the troops. I really do. But these guys were dicks. So I got into a, a, a big argument with them. Uh, and there were two people from the Navy in the front row. Jesus, Joe, you're yelling at retards and the troops? <laughs> <laughs> he was, that kid wasn't retarded. He was a fucking kick dick. kick a puppy at the end of your last gig? <laughs> so... I kept saying I support the troops, but there was these two people in the front in the Navy, and I said, hey, you guys are in the Navy, too. I think that's great. And then I started to talk about how I don't really vote, and I kind of don't get into politics and everything. So after the show, I'm in— What percentage of people do vote, Joe? I'm going to go with 30—no, 15%. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) See, dude, you're still picking round numbers. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. But after the show, in the lobby, this the chick that was in the front row from the Navy comes up to me and starts screaming at me, You're a fucking jackass. You don't get it. I put my fucking ass on the line for you. This chick's like 50, by the way. And I'm like, are you even in the Navy? Well, well not anymore, but I was. And I put my fucking ass. And I go, lady, let me just say this. If you're going to make a statement, make it an intelligent statement. You don't know what you're saying right now. And she's yelling at me and yelling at me. And finally, I go, lady, you know what? Fuck you. You're a fucking moron, right? And her husband now gets in my face. <laughs> was she face. still in uniform, Joe? No. She was in regular cunt clothes. And uh, then her husband Those gets... Those people, people that listen to here, you, you got to know about Joe. When Joe has these meltdowns, he usually does it in front of like somebody like... Uh, he'll yell at like one of those Salvation Army people with like the bell. <laughs> it's like when Joe has like a meltdown, he's always like in front of a church. Yeah. Yeah, I don't really ever strike out against any real cause or legitimate effort or anything. It's always, you know... A homeless man. One time I tried to beat up a homeless man because he insulted Billy in the street, and I tried to fight him. Oh, dude. I remember, yeah, this, this guy, Danny, this guy, how, how old was he? Yeah, he's probably 65 years old. He, he's yeah, he was, old. Yeah, that 58 to 65, a baby boomer who just uh, never happened for him, you know? This fucking guy, I don't know what happened. He, he started giving us shit or whatever, so I gave him a little bit of shit back. We were kind of drunk or whatever. So the guy comes down the street. It was me, Joe. We were two girls. It was yeah. like five of us in this group. This fifty year old black, 58-year-old black dude comes running down the street. He starts doing almost like this, uh, This um, I saw a karate movie in 1972 stance. Yeah, yeah. Going, come on, man, come on. I kept saying he looked like Marvin Gaye. Because he had this beard. So I, I kept singing, uh, what's going on? As he's doing this shit. But Joe gets in his face like he's in an action movie. Like, you want to go? Let's fucking go. Dude, he was fucking with you. Fuck Dude, him. And then, and then you, you I was, strutted away like you, just, like you just went at it with I some guy. I felt good. Yeah, like you felt good. Gold's gym. Give me, in my defense... We played uh, we played beer pong in that bar for a good hour. That's what he was. He had he had big sad Marvin Gaye brown eyes. He too. was a dick. But you know what's he was funny? Homeless Joe. Here's the commentary of the two stories. You sung "What's Going On" to the Marvin Gaye guy. This military lady, I'm fighting with her and fighting with her. She won't listen to me, and she starts going, "You ought to protect your goddamn country." So I just started singing "America the Beautiful." I was just like, "Oh man." America, America. You know what, I hate, I, it is a pet peeve of mine. I hate when people in the Navy say you're protecting our country. You're not. <laughs> okay? Who the fuck has a Navy out there? That's gonna, didn't we destroy all navies after yeah, well, World War Two? Did, didn't huh? we have that pi- problem with those uh, those eight pirates in the oh, off, in off the, the off rowboat? The, off the coast of Africa. <laughs> yeah, you got you got you got to wait for. Uh, yeah. Seven Zimbabwe's with the outboard motor. Yeah, that was that thing happened the one <laughs> time. Like seriously, dude, if if you were going to war, okay, say if you're gonna if you're gonna go into politics, so you needed it on your record that you didn't pussy out during wartime, and right. you you wanted to go into service, the fucking navy's the way to go. Yeah, navy. You just sit off the coast. You I don't, think you don't you're absolutely shit. right. Yeah, you sit in a little hubby, you eat some chowder. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. You know, on your boat. Exactly. I'll tell you, the only life. guys who who get off easier are the guys with like in the Air Force with like the orange sticks that like guide the plane in, or maybe like the guy who sticks the blocks under the wheels. I don't even want to be the guy 
with the sticks. I want to be the guy making the sticks. Fuck oh, the that. Guy, the I don't even want to be out on the aircraft. You drill the hole for yeah. the rope that they stick exactly. in there. So then one day you can flip out at a comedy club. I'm it's... fucking protecting your ass. <laughs> exactly. Everybody acts like they're on the front line. I, I, bet, I bet Navy SEALs and those guys fucking hate that shit. Everybody oh, walking Jesus around. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Some guy that just had to slit some mercenary's throat. <laughs> yeah, some, some guy <laughs> in the, in the Navy the sunning himself in the Persian Gulf on the deck of an aircraft carrier. Yeah. Don't you love that? It's so like, the guy's in fucking Fallujah. Yeah. Navy SEAL Johnson. <laughs> uh, we need you to infiltrate the desert and take out this czar. Uh, Miller, uh, go guide this plane in. <laughs> but yeah, you're both point, protecting the country. Point in the direction that the plane's taking <laughs> off. You ever seen that guy? You just got to take like a yoga class. He can bend down far enough so you don't get sucked into the fucking jet engine. That's yeah. right. Here on Uninformed, if you're listening to this shit and you're in the Navy, we're saying, uh, you know, unless you're a Navy SEAL, you know, go fuck yourself. You're not protecting us. All right? You're, you're, on, you're on a ship. And you're on a cruise that's what, four years long. What percentage? Now, honestly, not <laughs> like I'm just trying to get some callers here. Not our fake percentage. Honestly, what what real percentage would you estimate of people in the military actually put their ass on the line? Like are actually in the fucking fire? Eighteen. That's is that that's eighteen percent. About eighteen. Yeah. If you got like uh, you know, you got a couple guys. What do we got? We got like seven jets over there. Seven to ten, right? <laughs> No, we do, we do it. I saw it on Wikipedia. We got like, <laughs> yeah. All the, if you just tuning in, all this shit's backed up. We got it. We got encyclopedias right in front of us. We got like eleven jets over there, right? All right. That's a good number, Joe. If you're gonna guess later on, uh, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's it's the fucking guys. You know, you're on point. That Vietnam shit. All right, if, you, if you're in some computer guy, yeah, my, you, ever, you ever see this shit like they try to suck you in to get into the military and they show the guy sitting in the control room in the laptop? I mean, that's basically. I've actually gotten upset with my dad. Cause You're in a he, cubicle in the middle of a war. I've gotten upset with my dad because he's in Vietnam, or he was in Vietnam, and I've actually gotten annoyed with him because he has no good stories because he worked in the fucking file room. Exactly. And it was, it's like, it, you know, I remember being a kid and being like, Dad, tell me a story about the war. And he was like, hey, you know. He'd my dad was in the Navy. Papers. My dad was in the Navy. He was in the Medical Corps, and they didn't even ship him to Vietnam. They shipped him to Chelsea Naval Hospital in Massachusetts. <laughs> I mean, he had some incredible stories about wounds, but it's not like they were going, Medic! And he was, you know, serpentining. <laughs> yeah, if there's any uh, any veterans out there that want to call up and, uh, you know, actually seen some action. and uh, That's do, true. Do, do, do you get, like, annoyed with other people who start strutting around like, you know, they, they, they had some incoming when they're really just, you know, it's true, pe every... peeling fucking potatoes? What, do these lights mean that there's calls coming? Yeah, we got calls. Uh, actually, oh, let's cool. go to Ken in Massachusetts. Okay. His son is in the Navy. Okay. Ken, what you got? Okay, uh... You're telling me uh, that the Navy doesn't play a role in the Army. That's what I'm saying, oh. sir. I'm saying it's a, it's a, it's a tugboat with a gun on the front. Except, except Navy SEALs, Ken. Except Navy except SEALs. Except Navy SEALs. Okay. Um, I don't know. My son was in the Navy, and he was in the USS Kennedy in Afghanistan. Can you prove that? Can I prove it? Yeah. yeah he, he it just sounds like it. this is like off the top of your head, you know? You got no, any, it's not you got off any the statistics? top of my head. But anyway, he so got... you don't have to get uh, angry, okay? You can just present. This is a very wide open forum, so I don't need okay. anger. He, um, they shot and uh, they fired guns and they got nine out of ten major... What's this, paintball? Major tech points. Major what points? Yeah, dude, you're talking <laughs> shop here. Major, I mean, target, I, major target points. But what what were the major? What do you mean by ma they had ten major targets? Right, when this is uh, right after nine eleven, he was uh, shipped out to Afghanistan on a JFK, uh -huh. and they were ordered to fire. You Can know, you get to Afghanistan by a boat? I thought it's surrounded by land. Well, that's it? the thing. That's the thing, Ken. It's like uh, how in danger are the boats uh, uh, wherever they are near I mean, Afghanistan if I, if I had versus kid, the I, I, army and the Marines? They're actually in the desert, getting bombed in their in their their bunkers and all that shit. Yeah, well, they do play an important role, though. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Here's my problem. Yeah, they do. They they bring over the guys who are going to get shot at. Every time somebody <laughs> says they're in the military, <laughs> dude, you got to admit, man, if you're going to be in there, I, I'd rather be on a on a fucking destroyer. Okay, I have not well, seen any good well, navy. Son... Listen, listen, sir, sir, you're very hostile. Um, I'm not hostile. Okay, well, Ken, you're very, my... pa you're very passive. Ken, 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 listen. 
Okay. You don't you don't have to be proud just because your kid was in there. My dad was in the army, and I'm not proud of him. He's got no good stories. <laughs> His best story was that he saw the post office get blown up. That was the best thing he had to tell me. That's a shitty sure. story. Not every guy propelled he down got a, a rope from the helicopter <laughs> with a backpack on. He cut it. He got a purple heart. He cut his thumb peeling <laughs> potatoes. Thanks for the call, Ken. All right, man. See, that's what I'm saying. You know what I mean? I mean, you figure, I thought I was really getting nervous. They're like, this guy's going to be, let me tell you something, you sons of yeah. bitches. He was just like, uh, you know, they uh, had some ballistic. Uh, yeah, can we make a rule? F- yeah, yeah. <laughs> I thought he was going gonna... to. I want to hear somebody hardcore, you know, who's, you know, who got into this shit over there. Do you, do you get fucking annoyed by people who, who are trying to pretend like, like, you know, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, it's like when I worked in a warehouse, Joe. This is exactly like going to war. You know, I'd be like unloading the trucks. <laughs> I'd be unloading the trucks. No, there's a point here. I'd, I'd be, un- I'd be un- the, the ignorance, the <laughs> level of ignorance already is, um, is astounding. I can't. It's, yeah, but we're protected yeah. by the name. You're uninformed. You can't get mad at this shit. Okay, oh, look, Jesus Joe. Christ. I have to go with what I know. Okay, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you right now. I know warehousing. Okay, with this goddamn internet. Okay, it's, it's going to end it. Okay, because right. all boxes are going to become digitized. In fact, at least 43% of them at this point are, are digitized. It's not even matter. They, they just, it's like Star Trek now. <laughs> so, and if anybody wants to dispute that, I, I, got, I got the fucking facts what is your in front of me. Anybody in warehousing that wants to fucking call this show up, okay, I will bury you with the shit that I can come up with about warehousing. <laughs> this is my point. I hate it, I hate it when, when, when we went to, to the, uh, this is just like war. When I was working in the uh, in the warehouse, and the, and and the company picnic would come along, and all these suits would put on their fucking t-shirts and their you know it's Friday dress down wear, like uh, like they weren't making a hundred grand a year, and they try to act like grunts and like they were unloading trucks. I hear you. All right, you know I'll, give you I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Dude, I'm telling you, with the with the warehouse door open, the neighborhood that I was in, it was potential that you could get shot. So, dude, it was the this same is thing. Just like war. <clears throat> it was the same thing when I worked for the uh, when I worked for the Senate in Texas. And the senators, I remember. Senate in Texas. Yeah, the Senate's. Believe it or not, uh, the the Senate, the senators would have these like parties. You know. Did they know you were half Egyptian, Joe? They didn't. They didn't. You kept they, that low key down there. It huh? was weird. Their their nostrils would flare up a bit huh? when I was around them. Joe, did, did you mess with Texas? <laughs> but <laughs> the whole thing was, they would have the senators would have these parties. And they'd have, like, some kind of bluegrass band at their party, and the senator would come in in boots and jeans, and they'd have a keg, and it'd be like, ah, get, get some gumbo, son. I'm just one of y'all. And it's like, no, you're not. You're a fucking millionaire that lives in a mansion somewhere. You're, I'm working for 22 grand a year in this shit. Dude, hole. that is so much like fucking war. It, it's unbelievable. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Exactly. See, so we know. That's my point. Yeah, we know, we know, we That's know what we're point. saying. That's my point. What the, percentage uh, of people are going to die of heart disease in uh, Texas? Uh, not enough. Is, oh, you didn't, my... you didn't have a good time down there, Joe? N- not particularly. I'm not knocking. You don't, you, don't, you don't look like a line dancer, Joe. It, you know what? Here's what I didn't like. I lived in Austin. There wasn't, I was ready for shit-kicking hoo-ha Texas, and Austin is just the most liberal, bleeding-heart, pretentious cunt city oh, on the hilarious. fucking map, dude. That's like when I moved from Boston down to uh, North Carolina, and I moved down there, and I thought I was going to be the cool kid. I thought I was going to be, like, footloose. Yeah. Like, they were all going to be, like, 20 years behind yeah. us. And I got down there, dude. They, they were doing more fucking drugs. It was, yeah, they listened to the same music. Dude, it was so annoying. Dancing wasn't outlawed. It was so annoying. I was ready for, like, bar fights and beer brawls and shit, and then you get there and it's like, have you seen the new extended version of Nosferatu? It really, it's, oh, go fuck yourself. You know what I mean? Oh, well, you should have gone, so... gone to the Houston area. Once you get past the sea of fatness that is Houston, they were actually voted the fattest city. I was afraid to go to Houston because the, the uh, ghetto boys were from there, and that it always sounded like a really, like, dangerous place. What, because of one rap group, Joe? You live in New York City. They How were, many they fucking were pretty rappers intense. Here? You know Jay-Z's boys from were, here? Yeah, 50 but... 50 Cent, all those Hot the 97, boys, the lobby of Hot 97. The Ghetto Boys in, used to have songs about fucking dead bodies. So that's that, you know, I think that crosses a certain gay. line. Yeah, it goes into, like, gay. That's almost like uh, like uh, death metal. Like, <laughs> like we're sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I fucking, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm it's old. It's kind of annoying. You are old, but it's, you know, whatever. Who cares? What are you going to do? Do we, we had another caller on this military thing? Oh, or? yeah. Let's, let's try to stay on topic here. Sure. Let's check out. I want to hear somebody from the military that, that, that either defends the Navy also, or... Also, 
Two, if anybody wants to call up from Austin, Texas and try to defend that, I would love to. That's great, Joe. Let's try to have nine different <laughs> topics going on as people call in. <laughs> Not right this minute, just at some point. Well, let's go to Trevor in Wyoming. Okay. Trevor. Trevor. Hello. Yeah. yeah, Trevor. Yeah, hello. Hey, uh, Hi. I'm, uh, I'm, I just got out of the Marines, and uh, I just want to say that there's a, lot of, there's a lot of Army and a lot of Marines over there in Iraq that really don't do shit either. You know, like... They go over there. Let me ask you a question, there. Trevor. Did 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 you do anything over there? Like did, like when yeah, Charlie yeah, Sheen yeah. makes the Iraq movie, is he going to play <laughs> you? <laughs> uh, uh, probably, probably not so much. But uh, Emilio, infantry, anyways, I- infantry. I didn't sit behind a desk. That's for sure. Now let me ask you this: Do you get fucking annoyed by uh, the guys who sit behind the desk? Do you think they should have a lesser uniform than you? Like maybe they shouldn't have combat boots. Maybe they should have like camouflage, like loafers. Or something like something of that effect. <laughs> it's disgusting that it's disgusting that they get paid the same amount of money that I do when I'm when I go out and I get shot at and they sit on base all day. You know what I mean? Like, well, tr- dude, I, I worked in a warehouse, man. I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> they wear the same ribbon. They get the same awards. You know, like to a to a civilian or to a regular person, you look at you look at two Marines or two soldiers and you don't know the difference. Well, let me ask you this: have, have you ever caught one of those people behind the desk trying to act like, uh, like, like they have some street cred over there, like almost like the whole rap thing, like trying to act hard and they actually grew up in the suburbs? Oh yeah, dude, all the time. Like, uh, do you, you call them out on it? Time, like, oh yeah, like, uh, or like you'll be in a bar and you'll catch some fag talking about how he thinks he's got post-traumatic stress because he saw a dead body or something. You know, you're kind of <laughs> right. you know, you know, it, you know it, it's Cause, pretty weird, Because he downloaded Faces of Death in his That's cubicle. Hilarious. Trevor, yeah, yeah, exactly. Trevor, so let me. I've always been uh, dumbfounded by this. If everybody gets the same pay and one group has a shittier job and is in more danger than the other group, then why volunteer to go infantry or why? You know what I mean? Why not try to go uh, desk job type of thing and still get all the benefits of the military, but not being shot at and all that stuff? You know. Well, because that, that's for pussies, man. Like, who joins, who joins the Marine Corps to sit behind a <laughs> I like you. I like you, Trevor. Hey, is that, uh... <laughs> the, 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 like, the reason why the people I know, and uh, I don't want to say me, the reason why they join is so they can go kill somebody or so they can go blow some shit up, not to be on a fucking desk and... Dude, uh, why don't they have you in the commercial? Yeah. <laughs> you know what they should have? They should have the first half of the commercial where they teach people computers and all that stuff, and then you just bust in in the middle of it yeah. with a fucking, like, AK just going, that's for pussies. Yeah, Trevor. They, the Navy's for pussies. Trevor, if you would have called me when I was in high school, you, they would have had me, because the guy that called me just went, I hear you play the drums, Joe. And I was like, yeah. And he goes, how'd you like to play them for your country? And I was like, eh, <laughs> I really wouldn't, actually. <laughs> If you would have called me and be like, dude, you want to go blow some fucker's face off? I'd be like, yeah. That's... <laughs> you ever see that movie Uncommon Valor? It's just like that. There's going to be 50 of them and one of you, and you're not going to die. <laughs> well, listen, man, I got to tell you, I got nothing but respect for, for every, anybody who's over there. Christ, I mean, it, I mean even if I, if I was over there not seeing action, the fucking sunburn that I would get. But I'm just saying, man, the fact that you're, you're, you, got, you guys ought to get a little... Uh, a little more money, but that's fun. That's funny. People fake, fake it like they've been like maybe seen some action, like a forty-year-old virgin. Right. He tries to act like he got laid, and he's talking about touching titties. Like ah, oh, yeah, it's just yeah. Like, that... It's like a bag of sand. Well, the uh, the wigger analogy you brought up. The hey, suburbs, easy there, Kramer. That's, that's... Easy. Okay, <laughs> we don't need Jamie Masada with the fucking the... <laughs> Laugh Factory logo behind him. Body, listen. That's a, that's a perfect analogy. Trevor, though. thanks for calling. Thank you, Trevor. That's a perfect analogy. Like, it really is. Like, Dude, all my analogies yeah. are right on the fucking money. Well, 90% of them. 90%. 90%. 80, 80, 80, 75. Um, uh, just out of curiosity, did we piss off anybody in Texas at all? No. All right. Nobody. Well, they think they all agree then. No more Navy stuff? Because right. there's uh, Steve in Long yeah. Island. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He actually agrees with you guys. All right. Steve. Yo. Yeah. You know, the, the actual amount of people actually see action over there is uh, probably like 5%. You know what? I like this like guy. One, He's using 1%. percentages. 1%. One percent. One per- it's that low? <laughs> that <laughs> low. I was over there in Afghanistan, and it was hot. And, that was about, and uh, I, I made sure uh, the, U, the U.N. didn't get in our way. Let me ask you, are, are you back? Yeah, I'm back. 
Listen to me, are you back? No, I'm calling from a fucking cell phone in Afghanistan. I feel, I'm really an idiot. <laughs> yeah. All right, when you go out to bars and try to get pussy, do you, do you try to pretend like you every saw some... Every single time. You try to pretend like you saw action. <laughs> oh, every single time. Okay, can, can you do the voice? Can you do the voice I've like the... I've seen things, man. I've seen things. Yeah. You know, you just, don't ask, don't, just don't ask questions. Hold on, I'll be the, I'll be the chick. Let's, let's role play it. Ready? Right, so you, I'm just standing at the bar, all right? And you're approaching me, so go ahead. Hey, sweetie, what's going on? I, used, I was in Afghanistan. Hey, yeah. what, what was that like? Ah, uh, the death over there. It's just, it's awful. Oh, my pussy's so wet. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, that was the worst impression of anything. You, you sound like you were bombing an audition to be the next Muppet on Sesame Street. I don't know, it's a sock puppet with a high voice. Hey, oh, that's amazing. I just made my voice go a little higher. There's no depth to this character whatsoever. Joe DeRosa, yeah, no. see? On the spot. Joe DeRosa. I give you what I got. Uh, Steve, did you get laid, though? Oh, uh, yeah, plenty of times. Mm. It That's works. awesome, dude. It works. Just, just the uniform. Do, do you practice in the mirror to get that, that fucking 200-yard stare? You know, it works every time when you when you when you shake your head when you're uh, when you're giving the lines too. Like like you got something else going on in the back of your head. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like it. Oh, that's good, man. Yeah, Would you be offended yeah. if I tried that later on tonight? Uh, you know what? I'd be offended if you didn't. <laughs> okay, I got I got a green jacket. I might, might throw that on a little bit later. Just yeah. sort of... <laughs> Steve, come to the after party tonight after the show. You got it. Yeah, it's gonna be at um, where are we having it. Yes, yeah, the subway. There's. <laughs> No, it's going to be hot, man. There's going to be a DJ. We're going to go to Playwrights Tavern after the show on 49th Street between 7th and Broadway for okay. our little after party. So if you feel like driving out, we'll be there drinking I'm, quite a bit. I'll be there. Pl plenty of seats, people. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, thanks for the call. Thank All right, you, well, Steve. we'll take one more. Do we have anybody who's in the Navy who's, like, pissed and saying, uh, yeah, is there anybody that doesn't... my mop is defending your freedom? You know what the funny thing is? No. I mean, everybody's saying, yeah, you guys are right. I was in the Navy. Jesus Christ. Let's talk to Cody. Cody and okay. Austin. We can't What's up, man? Oh, Cody and Austin. Here we go. We'll get we'll get a we'll double shot guys, here. I was, actually, I was actually a nuclear engineer in the Navy. Biggest fucking nerd job in the world, and I lived in Austin for like 10 years. So I can back you up on both fronts. Yeah, but there I we go, tell Cody. You, man, nice. I got to nice. tell you, man, the worst part, though, is not the assholes that you run into in bars and shit in the civilian world. The worst part is when you're actually in the Navy and you're fucking working in a shop with a guy. Like you're, he's like in charge of you, watch center supervisor or whatever, and he's like that because when he thinks he's all fucking gung ho because he's throwing some chemicals and beakers and shit, right? You know what I mean? Right. And right. he makes your life fucking hell because he wants you to feel like you're out there shooting people and stuff. You so know you're, ba I mean? you're basically yeah. saying that like this last guy was saying that maybe one two percent of people actually see action, but you see vet, you see people in, in the armed services every night, you know. Saying that I'm defending your country and blah blah. I guess they're speaking for that one percent. I understand it, but I think there ought to be like a teleprompter underneath. Like uh, the, technically, this person has never been shot at since his yeah, older brother bought a BB gun when he was eight years old. And and that 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 guy giving you shit, like your your lab supervisor guy, that's some fucking pussy. That's taking all in his insecurity shit out on you. You know what I mean? Like he's fucking it's feeling shit like for not being out there. School wants to grow up to be a cop. You know what I'm saying? Right, the right. Guy most shit growing up is the first one who wants to join the fucking police academy because then he'll have the power. Right. The guys that suck are the ones that stay in the military for fucking ever and rely on that crutch of coolness. Because now every time they go to a bar, people are buying them drinks and shit. Man, I saw some Navy guys in a bar three nights ago, and they were talking all this shit about Iraq and all that. And I, and I, and you know, I kind of like to bait them a little bit. So right. did, did they know that you? They, did they know that you were in the uh, the service? Or no, 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 no. I don't even tell him. I just, I just, you know, talk to him. Oh, that's really cool, man. Yeah. And then towards the end of the conversation, I point at his arm and yeah, yeah. Those two little feathers mean you're a fucking secretary. Shut the fuck up. Ooh. You know what I mean? <laughs> we should get you and the last guy to fight somewhere <laughs> later. Oh, I'm that's all for it, man. Well, that's what that's what uh, sparked this whole thing is because that chick in the navy screaming at me and she's like fifty and I go, lady, are you in the navy? And she's like, well, well, not not anymore, but I will. And it's like. I'll yeah, she was then. in the Navy. Yeah, her, her job was to blow an admiral. Here we go. Another classic from episode one. Episode one. Ha ha. I like that shit. That sounds like some Star Wars shit. Anyway, sit back and check it. The game show, ho. The reason that Nia is here is um, Why am I here? we're going to do uh, a game show of sorts uh, right now. Basically, what it was is uh, it's always funny to watch politicians, um, when they're running for a certain office, try to 
sort of politi- politically uh, correct their way through through a tough question to they answer ne- they, something. They never answer the question. Tactfully. They never answer the question. They never answer the question truthfully. That's for certain. So uh, we were thinking we should do a game show where we get random, really hard questions thrown at us, us being Bill and Graham and myself. And the goal is you have to answer these questions truthfully but without losing any votes. That's the trick. Uh, the second we smell bullshit, you get buzzed by the other players. Uh, and the second you spin it too hard into something else, you get buzzed. But also, if you're too brutally honest, you get buzzed too. So we yeah, understand lose, the rules. So we're basically sitting around going, these fucking politicians, they never answer questions. And then we're like, well, if you actually answered them honestly, you'd lose votes. And then we started talking shit going, I could fucking do that. So now we're going to see. All right. So we're here's gonna see how we're going to do it. Go ahead. Nia's going to ask the question. She's going to pull them randomly out of that. Some of them are easier than others, right? Mm -hmm. We'll go in order. Billy will get asked a question first. While he's while he's answering his question, Nia, myself, and you, Greer, will act as the judges. Okay. Uh, When it's my turn, how many points? You, Billy, Nia, judge, and so on. Uh, This feels like when the electricity goes out, and you're like, "Fuck, we got to play a board game here." We'll just give we'll give one we'll give Board one point for question. Fuck it, and you got like um, seventeen seconds to answer it. All right? Wow! So. No, we're very accurate. We do a lot of research here. Okay. So here we are. This is uh, who wants to be a politician? All right. <laughs> this feels like college radio. <laughs> Fuck that! We did a great job for two hours and forty minutes. There's gonna be yeah. some shit. This, this is where the show night, might guys. jump the shark, but maybe not. I don't know. This might be funny. All right. All right, Nia. Let's let's with our host, Nia. All right, so the first question. For who? Do, for you, Bill Burr. Okay. Do Jews run the media? <laughs> oh, wow, you hit me fucking hard right off the bat. Well, I would definitely say that uh, there are a lot of Jews in the media, but to suggest that they're all working as one <laughs> is a little too, uh, I don't know. There, there's a lot of them. Uh, but no, I'd say that they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Well, I didn't say anything anti-Semitic. You jumped up, you backpedaled at the end. <laughs> we all... the, 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 but there's a bunch of Irish guys who are cops. You know what I'm saying? Everybody picks something that they run. Well, you know what? You should have said that as your answer, and you would have gotten a point. Really? You, <laughs> you know what? You should stop being so Is smug. Time up? Is Shut up. Time up you got to stop being so smug like, like you're fucking up by 50 points. <laughs> His time's Wait a second, up. though. Where is where is the timer, though? I'm holding it right all here. All right, all right. Hold the so timer. you kind of included that last part. Question. You got to keep it going. All right. Next question. Uh oh. Who's this one for, for Greer? Greer? Okay. Greer Barnes. <laughs> Greer Barnes. Greer Barnes trying to get elected. <laughs> are Asian people rude? Um, I wouldn't say that Asian people are rude. Um, I just. This <laughs> <laughs> is over. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. You just um, lost Chinatown. <laughs> Um, you know, it's just really, uh, honestly, hard to understand them at times. That's and, and, <laughs> and that explains. And that explains why. And that's rude. That's rude. Not right? rude. They speak loud because there's a lot of them. <laughs> so, yeah, and they're what all talking, what? so they have to. This worse and worse. I don't because they always go like that when they talk. You know, like I'm, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> All right, neither one of us is getting... All right, Joe, you're the fucking big shot. Let's. It's 17 think. seconds and up. When I went in, that was 17 seconds. Oh, yeah, and it's uh, horrendous. Do you have a buzzer sound over there, Danny, oh. so we don't have to listen to Joe's version of a woman <laughs> coughing? <laughs> you just, you just... Oh All right. All right, what do you got for Joe? All right, for Joe DeRosa. Sweatshops, do you care? They're so far away, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they are very far away. Um, I think it is definitely uh, an unjust policy that's going on over there. And... Uh, I don't think that it should be happening, but then again, uh, we all need sneakers. So, um, <laughs> you know. Dude, you had it right there. You had it. You should have bailed right there. <laughs> where are the places where Man. there are sweatshops? The Philippines? There you go. <laughs> Taiwan? All that I don't know. As long as Foot Locker's full, I'm cool. Oh, here's I almost a- had a point. I did blow it. That sucks. Right. Here's a good one for you, Bill. Okay. I can do this. Are women funny? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Next one. <laughs> All right, Greer, you're up. That was brilliant. All right. He gets a point for that, right? That was Greer. Brilliant. Yes. Just look. Oh, man. Mexicans. Mm-hmm. What's the big deal? They were here first, right? Um, I'm going to have to say no, they weren't here first. They weren't called Mexicans then. Uh, wow. <laughs> there goes any Tex-Mex. All that shit's gone. 
I let him go. <laughs> and and you can, uh, <laughs> let him go. Go back across the border. Jeez, Greer, what Would are you, you running butt for? him? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. Danny, you're falling asleep at the wheel here. Yeah, how far has he got to go before he gets disqualified? <laughs> All right. Uh, All right. All right, Joe. Yes. Why do black guys have to be so loud? I don't know, I but like it's... should be asking the black man that. It's, it's kind of annoying. I, it's nothing against <laughs> black guys themselves, but they are loud and they do yell a lot. It's kind of... <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Uh, go. I don't be yelling. <laughs> okay. okay. All right, Bill. Yep. <laughs> At what age does someone become useless, and what should we do about it? Um, I would say 86 if you can't drive. And, come on, dude. I mean, I, I can't even get halfway through it. Who votes after 86? Just to keep score, no points. Nobody has any points right now. You, 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 you got it. You had half a point. All right, this is the last round here. Oh, Jesus All right, Christ, Christ, man. Do you support the troops? Absolutely. I just don't support the war. Oh, mm. dude, you hit. perfect. There you go. Okay. No, that was perfect. Was good. All right. One point for Greer. <laughs> One point for Greer. It's going to be a One black president. Greer. Come on, Joe. Step okay, it up. Okay, Joe. <laughs> Gay marriage. Yay or nay? Yay. Of yay. course, I think you it makes him more sense. buzz him just to say yay? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking tag. <laughs> yay. It was written in the question, though. Huh? It says yay or nay. And so. Joe wrote the fucking questions. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. All right. Are we still doing this? Let's do really, one more quick round, and then we'll go to the, the porn right. stuff. Uh, Bill, didn't we do more with this land than the Indians ever would have? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they're getting shit-faced out on the fucking uh, <laughs> reservation, so... <I> mean, <laughs> <laughs> what, you guys don't want honesty in your politicians? Okay? I'm Bill Burr. I say how it is. I say how it is. If I you, can't if believe... You, if you can't handle the truth, then... I'm not the one that you want to have I as your senator. I can't believe you led that off with, yeah, absolutely, you <laughs> fucking smug prick. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Jesus Christ, dude. Oh, brilliant. All right. All right. So One more for Greer, one more for me, okay. and we're done. Oh, all right. Uh-oh. Sorry. That's okay. I thought we were so you, you, you have to win. All right, Greer. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Ooh. Is it time for a female president? Um, Absolutely. <laughs> This motherfucker gets all the easy <laughs> no, but he's fucking a, he's questions. <laughs> oh, yeah. Why not? I mean, You're yeah, answering absolutely. honestly, though? I, yeah, absolutely. He's answering easily. No, I'm answering honestly. Why well, okay, not? I, really I believe him. Should. Seriously. I believe him. Yeah, he's Greer, sincere. Greer, are you currently in a relationship? Yeah. Are you happy? Next See, question. You don't, you don't want a female <laughs> president. We I believe no. his fucking Look, water no. gate right just, there. Just for the... Dude, my relationship dude. has nothing to do with how it feels. No, we're running out of time. We have to get to that point. Just for the warmth that he said honestly with. Okay. All right. So, Joe, you think two guys making out is disgusting, don't you? I absolutely do not. I think it's a beautiful thing, and two men should be able to love each other instead of being... <laughs> no, you just lost all the red states. You lost all the fucking red states. Graham Barnes with two points. Is Graham the next Barnes president. wins. Oh all right. God. We'll be right back with some choice cuts from the motherfucking uninformed mixtape, bitch! Uninformed! Alright, well that sucked. To hear the Opie and Anthony show five days a week, live on satellite radio, online on your phone or tablet, or even on demand, go to SiriusXM.com. Also, interact with the Opie and Anthony show on Twitter, at Opie Radio, at Anthony Cumia, and at Jim Norton.